Oops. Happy 2023, everybody. This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live. Show number fucking 241? Something like that? Unbelievable. Happy 2023. I hope everybody had a great night last night. I hope everybody's having a great holiday. Um, last time I saw everyone was at the holiday, it was the holiday show, right? That was great. It's a good show. Really enjoyable. We'll have a great show today. I guarantee you. I'm excited about today's show. These are some old friends of ours, a band that I used to manage back in the day. Uh, lots to talk about. I guarantee you we're going to have a couple of laughs. It's going to be a good one. I guarantee you we're going to have a couple of laughs. Hey, Gertie, how you doing? Nice to see Nice to see you. Scott Earth, come on now. Oh, that's right. It's a New Jersey thing today. Right. Yes. When is 250 getting announced? Huh. When I book it. <laughs> when I book the fucking thing. I will say this about show 250. About who it's not. It will not be Mike Muir. I can tell you that uh, Mike passed. Uh, Mike Muir doesn't do a lot of uh, these type of things. So Mike passed. So not sure what 250 is going to be yet. We're working on it. So what we, we, we will see. You know, we'll see. There's a, there's a couple other possibilities, a couple other bangers, you know. Um, so we'll, we'll see how it goes. Well, thanks, Ray. That was great. Speaking of, speaking of which, speaking of the other night, let's bring this guy on. Hey. What's up? How was the other night? Happy New Year. The other night was great. The other, the other night was long. <laughs> it was... That it really was a great. I like you was, like you were saying earlier. The Brooklyn Bowl is a is a great room. Yeah. And uh, man, those guys kept going. They just they did that night, the night after, and last night. Well, I don't think anybody knows who you're talking. Well, some people do, but let's uh, let's do photo of yeah, the day, in the which, head. <laughs> which kind of which kind of ties it in. But here, here's a shot from the other night, and uh, this is from. Uh, Right to left, it's Walter Schreifels from Gorilla Biscuits and Quicksand, Eugene Hutz from Go Go Bordello, and Jesse Mallon, all the way down there on the end, collectively known as the Hardcore Highwaymen, which was a, which was a cool thing. It's sort of like yeah. they, they 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 took it they took it from hey, what's up, Brooke? Hope you're well, Brooke. Nice to see you. Um, they took it from the the hard uh, from the what was it called the highwayman which from the highwayman yeah which was um, Waylon Jennings, Johnny Cash, and Willie Nelson. This is the hardcore highwayman, which is Walter Schreifels, um, Eugene Hutt. Yep. Yeah. And here they are doing their thing, but here is their set list, which was um, pretty cool. They did. They did hardcore. What kind of songs do you think the hardcore highway men would do? Hardcore songs. They opened Fast. up with Agnostic Front, Victim in Pain, uh, Degenerated is a Reagan Youth song. Push Us Too Far, Friends Like You is Sick of It All, right? Yep, yep. I'm So Tired. I, I, I'm drawing a blank on that one. Um, big Takeover, of course, Bad Brains, Underdog, Intro, and Mark of the... A squealer. Squ no, it's apparently it's the squiler. The squiler. <laughs> the squiler. Mark of the squiler. You know, Eugene has been dying to do that song since the the Tompkins Square Park show. He said, oh, "I wish I had more time. I wanted to do Mark of the Squealer." He's been talking about it since, so he was he was pretty happy to do that one. Yes, yeah, Scott. Uh, yeah, a lot like the Drew Stone Hit Squad. Uh, very similar to what to what we do. Uh, they did. They did um, here towards the end. Actually, when you talk about Mark, Mark of the Squiler, uh, the <laughs> Leeway song, they did bring out some of the some of the other people in Gogo -Go Bordello, and yeah. uh, they supplemented it with the bass player and the drummer and that ripping guitar player. And they did Mark of the Squealer. You know, stitches so, get stitches. Yeah, it was it was cool. It really I gotta, was. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. You know. Got to get and, them to do. Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was going to say that was like the beginning of the Gogo Bordello kind of encore. 
you know, like they put it like sort of towards like three quarters into the Gogo Bordello set and uh, relentless, just a relentless set, man. I think they play. I think they played for fucking two I hours or something. It was at least two hours. Bro. Yeah, it was. It was no joke. It was. And it was Eugene's energy did not slow down until. I mean. Yeah, he's he is a force of nature, man. Here he is. Ah, gonna... he, he, and this is like this is like this is like later in the set. This guy works himself up. No, it's pretty much covers. I mean, there's different interpretations, but they're playing it basically acoustic based. Three yeah. acoustic guitars. So and they're banging on these acoustic guitars. So, you know. They was they were ripping off shreds of his shirt. Yeah, he he's <laughs> so this, this guy. You know, here he is. I mean, he got up and sang with us. You know, that he, great. he did. He got up when we did If the Kids Are United uh, by Sham 69. There's Eugene, you know, uh, with uh, with uh, incendiary device right there, you know. And uh, listen, you know what? I, I want to say this about Eugene Hutz, man. Eugene Hutz from Go Go Bordello is a huge, huge supporter of New York hardcore. And you know, there's everybody, a lot of people, I don't say everybody, a lot of people out there, you know, go on and on about, you know, unity and a family and this and that. This dude has done more. He, I guess I'll keep it perfect. This guy has checked harder for the band I'm in and a lot of other bands that are in our Bowery Electric A7 family than 95% of the people out there that pontificate about how you know, we're all a family. It's a scene and support each other. This guy talks the talk and walks the walk. Absolutely. Eugene. Yeah, he's been he's been at like almost every single show all year long. Every time we play, this guy shows up. Yeah. You know, it's funny. He he came over. I remember before one show, he said, Hey, I'm so sorry I can't make the show. I gotta play Riot Fest that day. Yeah. Sorry, I can't make it to the Bowery matinee. We're, yeah. we're flying to Chicago to play Riot Fest. I gotta he, tell you, man, Drew, he's a you guys he's, he, great, and the new me? the new stuff. I can't wait to hear the rest of the record, man. New stuff sounds yeah. great. Yeah, thank you. He's I can't you. wait. To, I can't wait to hear the rest of the stuff either. It's it's ah. being it's being mixed and it's taking some time, and but a really heavyweight guy is mixing it, so. You know, it's really good. And, uh, you know, and speaking of New Year's resolutions, I need to lose, I need to lose, I'm 25 pounds overweight. <laughs> that's a double XL I'm wearing, man. Yeah, but you're in motion. That's not you. Yeah, I need to lose some weight, bro. Yeah, it's funny. You never wear white either. It's kind of odd. That well, that was the Kiev hardcore shirt. They, they right. you know, I, I want to support. Listen, Tim Fubar says, too often support the scene me just means buy my shit bro 100% man yo support the scene equals come to my show and buy my shit yeah, yeah seriously bro uh we we this do guy, we really do make a scene which is a beautiful thing you know this guy that plays guitar for gogo bordello fucking great guitar player man oh yeah Look, 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 how could you you can't be mad at this dude? He's wearing a class shirt, <laughs> right? What is yeah, the what the uh what does the hat say? Tucson, I think. Oh, this does say Tucson, okay. Tucson? Yeah, he was this guy was ripping, man. You know, I, I don't know, I don't know the dudes in his band. Like, I don't even know if they like speak English or what. Like, I don't know. Like And there's so much going on where one guy will go off, another one will come on. Yeah. You know, the girls come up from uh, Puzzle Panther. Yeah. It was... Uh, it you, was you, really... you, you know what it is? They're a band that they play a long time. And yeah. part of the reason they play a long time is because they do a headlining tours of Europe. Like big headlining tours of Europe. And when you're a headlining act and you're being paid as a headlining act, you don't play for 35 minutes. No. You got to no, play... You got to play as a headlining act in Europe. You got to play at least an hour and a half, at least. Yeah, Nate. And he, I wonder how last night was. Did Rich, Rich Zola? Did you go last night? Yeah, Rich was there. G, G, oh, Boris. Gina was there. Rich was there. Uh, um, 
uh, Larry Kelly was live streaming it. I saw, by the way, Murphy's Law, Murphy's Law played with them. Um, yep, yep. And, and Paris Mayhew from Chromax came up and played a couple shows, a couple songs. What did he play? Do you know? Sit at home and rot, maybe or something. I, I don't remember. I don't. Remember. I saw a great picture of Gina with uh, with Eugene and Jimmy actually. Right on. So, sit home and rot, rot. Girls, girls, they're okay. Yeah. Uh, Rich says it was bananas. Where are my bananas at? Bananas. It was bananas. That's right. right. You don't have a fruit of the day today. Hold on. Let me get my bananas. No. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. All right. Uh, anything else? What do you want? Uh, everything else? Are you going to okay? address the uh, the end of a legend? I don't know what's up with Rap Bones. You know, Rap Bones was going on about he's retiring, and then he was asking to come on the show today. So, so I'm, I'm a little confused where we're at. Rap Bones, maybe Rap Bones, you you can clarify. Oh, Gina says Paris played Crucial Barbecue. Oh, nice. Ba 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 barbecue. I sat home and slept. Sit home and sleep. Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Sit home and sleep. Sleep. All right, bro. So, what do we call him? What do we? What do I call you now? Do I call you? I don't William? know. What's your story, Rap Bones? You want to come on and explain this later, or what? I'm I'm confused as to how we're supposed to. If he's not, if he's retired as Rap Bones, are are we not addressing him as Rap Bones anymore? Like I don't know what to call him. I've never called him anything other than that. Listen, you know what you can call me, Mister Stone, <laughs> the Ayatollah of rock and roller, <laughs> <laughs> the warrior of the wasteland. Yeah. Hey, Danny, what's up, man? Speaking of, that's interesting. Speaking of of Tucson or the Tucson area, Arizona. How you doing, Danny? Uh, um, all the best to you and yours, buddy. And yo, Brett the Bookie, my neighbor. What's happening, Brett? <laughs> Good. All right, listen, I'll see you in a bit, man. You want to shout out anybody out? It's Sunday. I'm going to shout out this guy right here. Hey, is he? Look, looks like he's still chewing on his arm. Oh, bro. Yeah, he's, he's got, he's got up, some man. mental issues. He has mental issues? Yeah, he does. What can I tell you? I got mental issues too, but I don't gnaw on my arm, bro. I believe you. <laughs> All right, bro. Shout out to Daryl. I'll talk to you later. All right. See ya. See ya. Hate to be ya. This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live. The one, the only, often imitated, never duplicated. First show of 2023. We are sponsored by one, uh, excuse me, New York Hardcore Comics, The Organic Grill, The Texas Silver Rush, Generation Records, Grunge and Grime Soap Company, DTFM Vinyl Distro, and 126 Hardcore Clothing. They're a streetwear brand for restless individuals who don't compromise. They are about being positive, spontaneous, and true to yourself. For years, they experimented with several printing methods and materials and collaborated with a large number of designers and illustrators, always giving room for fresh perspectives while retaining the hardcore attitude. Get in touch with them. Ramp up your game at www.126hardcoreclothing.com. Come on now. Grunge and Grime Soap Company, our handmade soap and skincare company with a rock and roll spirit. Based in Nash Smashville, Tennessee, they combine their love for rock music, rock music, and their love for creating products that are good for your skin and good for your soul. Since the year of our God, 2019, they've been creating high-quality, natural, handmade soaps and sustainable, uh, excuse me, skincare products with ethically sourced and sustainable ingredients. They give 10% of the net proceeds to local community outreach programs. Visit the website at www.grungeandgrime.com and enter the code DREW to get 20% off your first order. That said, let's bring our guests on. Let's make sure everybody's okay. Thank you, Jonathan. Yes. Thank you. Happy New Year to you too, buddy. Yes, kitty anxiety. That's what it's called. Um, everybody else okay? Everybody's all right. There's no drama in the chat room. Let's bring on. Let me clear the deck. Yes, let's do this, Kajuski. Let's do this. Let me let me let me clear the deck here. What the heck? Here we go. Yo, we line the guys up. Bam. Here we go. 
Having formed in 1999 in Asbury Park, New Jersey, this band is known for their aggressive style and staunch work ethic. They put themselves on the hardcore map with the albums No Reason to Smile, At War with the World, and This Time It's Personal. After a 23-year hiatus from the New Jersey hardcore scene, the band have returned in a brutal fashion. 2023 will see the release of their new EP, Half Past Revenge, on Upstate Records. The new single, War, which we opened the show with, was just released the other day. Please welcome our old friends, Fury of Five, starting with Jay Fury, Stickman, and Chico Valencia. What's up? What's up? Oh, What's going on? I'm, I'm happy, to see, I'm we happy formed, to see you guys. Yo, we were formed in 1994. Is that right? Yeah. Well, I fucked <laughs> that up. <laughs> and, so and, good. Wait, so good. And, and would this would this be would this be a a an is this a, a 1994 shot here? Is this is this a, a stick man 1994? That's definitely 94, 95. Yeah. Still the same, bro. You know what I mean? Still the same. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nothing changed, bro. Ain't nothing changed. Now, Jay, how did you guys initially come together in 19 in, in, in 1994? In 94, uh, initially I met Mike Terror, our bass player. Right. Um, and we started jamming a little bit. Um, writing a couple songs, uh, some heavy stuff. Uh, we were jamming with a couple different guys, um, a singer, another guitar player, our original drummer, uh, Mark Goldman. And uh, it probably only lasted about two, three months. Um, the singer and the other guitar player weren't feeling us, so they basically called it quits on us. Um, I wanted to continue. But- which, 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 left, which left what, basically, you, you and Stickman? It, well, no, it was me. The bass player yeah, I'm sorry, right. and, the, and the drummer. Yeah, me, Mike, okay. and uh, Mark. Okay. Uh, Mike Terror used to play in Locked Up in Life with Stick uh, back in the day. So he said, listen, you know, my old singer from this band, he's a serious dude. He's in a band right now. We're not sure what's happening with that band. And if you're serious about wanting to pursue this, I can reach out to him. And, you know, I was like 17 at the time. And I was feeling it and I was like, absolutely. He was like, but listen, this dude's no joke. <laughs> if, uh, if, if I call him, you better be serious. Cause this dude's serious, you know? So <laughs> long and the short, um, Mike called stick, um, stick came to a practice in Tom's river in the studio there where we were meeting. And uh, he brought another guitar player with him who was Johnny anger, which was our other original guitar player. And, uh, we met then. We played him a couple songs. He said, "Let me hear what you got," and uh, that was it. That's how it started. And stick, you, you, you. I guess you had a little bit of a, uh, a, a, um, a resume going into it. Any recollections of, of kind of how how this all how this came on your radar screen? You know, I, I met Mike in like the end of my first band, like ninety one, ninety two. Locked up light broke up in '92 um, because the drummer had moved. He had moved to Florida, so we couldn't find the drummer to replace him. He was a beast. And then uh, I met these cats, formed a band called Position of Power. But you know, any band that I was in was kind of dysfunctional because I'm a fucking head case. So I had met, you know, I always had mad issues, and I take everything 100. So, like, if people don't match my energy, I get frustrated. I act like a savage or whatever. And then that band kind of just fell apart, and I was in limbo. And that's when Mike hit me up and said, yo, I got these young kids. They got good stuff. You should check them out. So I went to Mid-State Studio in Tom's River, and I walked in, and it was Jay, Mark, Mike. And me and Johnny Anger came together, and – uh they played what they had. I was like, okay, you know, take it home, let it, uh, you know, vibe with it. And then they came back with a name, with lyrics yeah, for the first song. What, what was the, uh, what was the origin of the name? And uh, how did that come about? I don't remember. I just was, 
I was just always like <clears throat> very furious. You know what I mean? Like as a person, like I was very just, I don't know, just violent and just next level. And, you know, and then I seen the five. So I was like fury of five. And I, I kept on saying it over fury of five. That's kind of fucking dope, you know? And then I said it to these guys and they, we all agreed that was the name. And, and then we wrote our first song, I owe you nothing. And then here we are sitting with you in 2023. There you know you what I mean? Yeah. That's, it, it, it's pretty amazing. You know, that the chemistry is still there from the, like, how this thing started, you know, the vibe, even like, you know, Chico replacing Johnny Anger, you know, his vibe fit the band better than that guy. So every everybody that's been replaced to a degree has been a step up from what was there, you know, it, it, even when Mikey Mayhem, who's going to be in, in a little bit, He's the next level of this whole thing. You know what I mean? So, like, now this ball of energy is so next level. Like, we're ready to go that level. You know, we're about to level up. You know, that's why I keep on saying level up or shut up because we're going to make some of these hardcore bands put in work. You know what I mean? Like, hardcore right now, to me personally, and this is not taking nothing away from these bands that are out now, but there's no authentic energy, anger, feeling, emotion, you know? When I write something, I mean that shit 100%. I'll back it 100%. I'll defend it. You know, I had a dude post uh, something that said, shit is corny. I'm like, corny? This shit is not corny. You just don't get it because you're a retard. It's not your fault. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you know, like you ah, know, Fury of Five is back. Yes. <laughs> Listen, I don't write. I don't. I, I don't write. Cor- I don't write corny lyrics. And if they think war, which stands for we already are corny lyrics, are oh, they gonna hate the next song? You know what I mean? <laughs> the next song and the next song, in our opinion, and Chico and Jay will tell you. That's the song. It's the song. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's I think it's gonna go next level. Yeah. Like next level. The what we about to drop next, I mean, people are loving war, and we did this song purposely purposely to capture the essence of Fury of Five. That's why in the video I'm standing there with the bat to take off from this time with personal. It's always been a theme with us, always, always uh choreographed and 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 had a a running theme you know the whole war theme has been from the beginning from no reason to smile with the kid on the bike well actually she was a girl on a bike with the camouflage you know that's our thing that's what we do you know what i mean so the next song is is next level and uh we're just ready to bring it we're we're not messing around and then the song after that is going to be mind blowing as well and then the song after that (laughs) <laughs> people are going to be like, yo, what the fuck are these dudes on? You know what I mean? And yo, to be honest with you, and Jay can tell you, and Chico can tell you, we wrote these songs in less than two months. War was in the, the song War was in the, uh, the making, kind of. Then then the, we just snowballed. And then I put the pressure on by booking the studio time. Jay was so like, I don't know. I don't know. I said, we got this. We got this. You know what I mean? Because I've already got a whole another record written already. Full lyrics, 10 songs. Then I got an outlined album ready to rock. I don't fuck around when it comes to this music shit. I don't make no money off this shit. You know what I mean? I do this because I love it and I mean it. And it comes from the heart. Everything I write comes from the heart, man. Yeah, as soon as you start making money, as soon as, you, as, soon as money comes into the game, it just fucks everything up. You know, it, it, it does. It really does in a certain way. But let, let me let me steer the conversation uh, back back to the past. So, but Chico, how did how did you get involved in the fold? How, how did how did how did this uh, how did this come into your orbit? Uh, me and Jay, me and Jay went to school together. So I think it was probably like the second day I started started at that school. I wore a Danzig shirt and we were friends from there on. <laughs> <laughs> How did uh, 
And, 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 and what, Jay, you just, he, you just knew we played guitar. You guys just started hanging. Well, we, uh, we, we were in, we were in the, what they called the blue room, which is for the bad kids. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah. But, you know, if you want to be real, that's what it was. And there was only like five kids in that room and Chico was new to the school. Um, it was for you, know, you, you went to a school right to a blue room? Yeah. You didn't even go to a regular classroom? No, that was... Yeah, that was, bro. Yeah. He was a problem child, man. Exceptional youth, kid. Exceptional youth. Yeah, we were yeah. special. We were special. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, so Chico had the same vibe. He wore the same, you know, uh, concert shirts that I did. And then uh, one day, you know, he was rocking a Danzig shirt. And I was like, okay, you know, this kid gets it. Uh, <laughs> and we started talking and we... Uh, we, we hit it off. We were 14 years old, you know? Wow. And, uh, young. Yeah. We started hanging hard and partying and, and having some fun and playing guitar together, you know? So we became, we became, you know, yeah. super close real fast. So we, we've known each other for a very long time. Very long time. Yeah. Right on. And excuse the noise going on in the background. My window's open here. I don't know if you hear that, but, uh, <laughs> New York City at its New York City at its finest. Shut that fucking alarm off. Uh, hold on, let me close the window. Uh, maybe that helps. Um, I want to. I, I, oh, it ended. I have a clip. I have a couple of clips because you know we 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 cross paths back in the day a little bit, but. This is a this is an interesting clip right here. I I, I want to show this clip because this will this will dredge up some memories. Check this out. Yeah. <laughs> Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> With the fucking dreadlocks, bro. Yeah, yeah. You guys with the fucking Chico, fucking you guys with the fucking dreadlocks, man. We want to be corn. Well, I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to, I wanted to be Rick to life. That was my mission in life. <laughs> <laughs>
that was one of those clips that I had like in my shit for like 20 years. <laughs> and I was like, oh, wow, I got this. I just found that fairly recently, man. That, that was, was a, cool. right? That, that was, was cool. a Wetlands show. I, 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 that was a Wetlands show with you guys, Madball. Nasty Front. Is that what it was? Maybe. I, I know we I played have, there. I, I know we played there with Nasty Front. Yeah. I have that. Hold on. Their first reunion back, right? Or yeah. return yeah. or something? I have yeah, that. Show. We, that was hard, dude. And I'm up 20 pounds on my weight, so I'm trying to get back to that weight size. So when I is, throw a punch, it hurts. Is that is that <laughs> is that this, Jay? Is that this? Agnostic Front H2 or Maximum Penalty Hate Breed Fury of Five? Yeah, I think so. Reun- I think reunion that, reunion show? Yeah, that's the yeah. one you and I have been talking about. Yeah. Is there l- looking back on this uh sick man, like is there looking back on it, is is there like a an a, a, an era or a moment where you feel like you guys were like really clicking on on all cylinders like where where it was really popping? It, it, was there like a, a little a run there where you felt like it was really clicking? Uh, like band wise, or like- yeah, like, like like band wise, and 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 just going out there and doing the work, and and feeling like you guys are making some you know some strides. Uh, you know, uh, was it running on all cylinders at all times? Uh, not really, because I was a freaking, I was a head case. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I was unpredictable. I was, uh, you know, ornery, you know, I was all about respect. I didn't give a fuck about what band you were in, who you, if you were a tour manager or bouncer, you, if there was this small window of disrespect, I jumped on it and used it as an opportunity for violence, you know, and the fear that I had put out there, you know, kind of was inside our our little thing because people were afraid at times to maybe say something or, you know what I mean? Like, you know, because I, you know, I, like I said in the, in the interviews before, you know, I was very terrible to Chris Rage as a drummer, you know what I mean? And, and that's, and that was really the downfall of the band. It had nothing to do about people trying to suppress us. Like Jay has said before, we've been canceled since 1994. People's been hating on Fury of Five from the beginning. Before cancel culture, Fury of Five was definitely one of the bands that people tried to suppress, you know? But it was an eternal suppression on my end because I was so, so, so crazy, you know? Like over-the-top crazy. Hey, it's amazing that um, I survived as, as a manager for a little while there, huh? <laughs> I mean, when you were at Dynamo Fest, you seen, you know, we yep. were on, we were ornery, ornery type dudes. You know, J, you know, Jay stepped to Desi from Cold Chamber right at the Dynamo Fest. You know, got his face, threw the Jewish star in his face because they called us racist in the magazine. You know, we we just, we just don't. We're not those dudes. We don't play. You know what I mean? We don't play. Even today, we're the same dudes. Same there's dudes. A, there's same, a shot. Same. There's a shot from Dynamo from when we went over to Dynamo. Um, yeah. Rest in peace, Bapo. Re- Bapo. Oh, me and ba- yeah, me and Bapo. Bapo. Me and Bapo right up front. Uh, Chico on the left. Uh, Stick. Mike. Uh, uh, JJ Power and yeah. uh, Kyle. Big Kyle. Who's the kid in the back? Oh, behind behind Jay. Jay Power. Jay Power. Right, Jay Power, I remember him. Yeah. Yeah, this was this was this was a great you guys were fucking great at Dynamo. You, you, that was you, an awesome you, show. That was a dope show. That you was know, super dope. You guys and I have the clip and I shot it and I have the clip. So hold on. Let, let's take Listen, a look. Listen, uh, and when you're talking about that run, were we on a run for like Fans and, and growing in that sense, of course, but we were destructing internally because of me, you know. But <laughs> listen, things happen for a reason, and here we are in 2023. And uh, I've been telling these guys the whole year it's our time, you know what I mean? I feel because I'm a different person, you know, I'm still the same guy, I just got control of my demons and the voices. 
in, in, in inside. You know what I mean? So I'm not quick to react and be, you know, am I trying, you know, I got dental work. I ain't trying to get my teeth knocked. I ain't trying to fight nobody unless they get real close to me and it's going to be a problem, you know, but we have a different mindset now. And, uh, but when it comes to this fury music, it's the same formula, same attitude, same energy. That's why when we came back, uh, June 11th, our first show, people were blown away. It's like we went from our last show was 1998 Convention Hall. And our next show was June 11th, 2022 in, in Asbury Park. And it's like we never stopped. You know what was, I mean? So, was the, was, uh, I don't, I don't want to, I guess, why not? Let's go there. What um, was, this is, this is hardcore. Was this the second show you did? Yeah, that's the second show. That was okay. June's, uh, July uh, 7th, right? Oh, I got, here's, here's a good, here's, here's a good question that, that's worth answering. How did I, how did you end up managing them? Yeah, I don't, I don't even, I don't even know how that happened. I remember. <laughs> this, this, this is good. This is good. And I don't want to mention, I don't want to mention any, I don't want to get too into names or anything, but it went like this. There was this, there was this um, booking agent. Was it and after we knocked Finberg out? You stop you let me tell the fuck. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yo, somebody, yo, you let uh, me tell the fuck. Uh, oh, yo, my man, yo, <laughs> yo, yo, somebody just posted that Earth Crisis at the Stone Pony. It was April something. Uh huh. I tagged you in it, Jay. Did you see it or no? Was, was that, was it, that yeah. the show where that went down? Yes. All right, yep. hold on. Let me t- let me tell the fucking story. So, right. Sorry, so at bad. the time, I, I was getting into some band management stuff. I um, I was managing Marauder uh, during the uh, uh, Master Killer era. Um, I'm not sure what came first. I managed Sub Zero. Of course, I was working with Biohazard a lot, and there was this booking agent that was booking a lot of the hardcore bands and was really kind of jerking people around and being, you know being a little problematic and I kind of developed a, a dislike for this guy. And then I, I, I knew Fury of Five was sort of existing peripherally. And this guy was Fury of Five's booking agent. Then I heard this story that Fury of Five absolutely pummeled this guy. And like they, they pummeled their booking agent. And I was like, they, they, they like absolutely pummeled the guy at the Stone Pony, right? And I was like, you know what? I got to manage these guys. I got, I, I, you know, I had such a penchant for chaos back then. I was like, these fucking guys are out of control. These guys are off the fucking hook. I got to get in on this. I got to manage these guys. Is that how you remember it, Jay? <laughs> uh, I get, you know, listen, it's a little, it's a little foggy because it was so long ago. I, I remember What's meeting you for the you first know? time through, uh, through Saab. I remember I was, we were, you know, we were close with Marauder and Saab especially. And uh, you were working with Marauder at the time. And my recollection, at least just from getting introduced to you is, is Saab made the intro and, and uh, you know, helped, helped to get us uh, together. Cause he was always looking out. You know? Yeah. Saab, Saab was, uh, Saab was that dude. Saab, Saab was that dude, you know? And uh, Oh, you know what? I just, what did I see this the other day? This is crazy. Wait, where the fuck is that? Hold on. I gotta, yeah, I gotta, I gotta show you something. Hold on. T- t- I gotta find this. Talk amongst yourselves a second. I gotta show you. I just found this the other day. <laughs> oh, man. What's up, fellas? Looking good. Yo, make sure we practice it next Sunday, dude. Yeah, we need to. Yeah, no doubt, man. Yeah. You know. You guys What's remember up? when I asked Dino who he was? That shit You're was back. hilarious. <laughs> that was hilarious. You asked the guitar player from Fear Factory, who are you? Was that at the Wetlands? <laughs> was that, that was at the Wetlands. He was in the back room. Yeah. You play fuck, I, I, I can't YouTube. fucking I can't fucking find it now. Fuck, man. Who are you? I got I found I was going through some shit and I found you know those like average, you know strips from like Wetlands or whatever like that they would hand out. For some reason, I, I was going through some shit the other day, and shit got turned over. And on the back of one of these things, in his own handwriting, was Sob's phone number. It said Sob and his phone oh, number. Shit. Yeah, 
And I, I fucking found it. It was just over here the other day. I don't know what the fuck happened to it. But anyway, yeah. So, yeah, Scott says, uh, Scott says, I'm so fucking stoked you guys are back together. You guys have to play Connecticut. You know what? Just real quick, because I know we want to talk about the president and we want to bring uh, your new drummer on, but let's take a look at um, this Dynamo. Are you ready to Was fucking that was off the hook that day. That was that was hard, bro. <laughs> that was oh, that was hard, bro. That, was hard, man. that show was bananas. It, it, it was great. That was that was one of the best. That was it was best, man. It, that it, was on Ochromag, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. that was on Ochromag. Uh, God rest the soul. Int introduced yeah. you guys. Yeah, yeah. I'm just kind of he, skipping he around. He loved. He absolutely loved Fury of Five. He loved he did, that. Man. He, he loved the fact we were just real dudes. We were yeah. like. You know, pretending to be something we weren't. You know, we weren't front end. Pretending we were New York hardcore. You know, we were we were just yeah. real dudes. Real dudes recognize real. You know, you know what it is. I don't want to sound cliche with that. But, you know, real recognize real, but it's it's facts. Definitely yeah, facts. Ono was Ono was great, man. He he was a great guy. You know. Yeah, he had some great stories too. Yeah, he was. I think he was one of the first guys to beat up Glenn Danzig. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, the first time I, my chest still hurts. The first time I met, I met Ono Cromag, he walks up to me and he fucking punches me in the fucking chest. Like fucking Ono Cromag style, right? Jesus. Like, and, 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 and he said, I know you, you're Drew Stone. And I'm like, <laughs> 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 It was like getting punched. It was like getting punched in the chest by like the thing from the Fantastic Four, bro. It was like that dude's fist was like this big, you know. <laughs> so, hey, what what are these these shots here? What 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 was this the first time in Europe? This stuff is that the dude from Machine Head? <laughs> <laughs> is this is this is this the first Europe tour? Is that what that is? I don't know where that was from. Yeah, that, had be, that, had, that had to be the first time of year. That was with Integrity. Yeah, here's another one. Yeah, Integrity. Yeah, yeah there's that the was with Integrity. Yeah. I actually have that that poster somewhere. You guys, you guys on tour used to always. You guys are very regimented, and you were very um, disciplined, and you were very clean. I like that about I like that about you guys. You guys weren't fucking you guys weren't animals. You guys like really, you know, you, you really took care of yourselves. And, you know, I was out with other bands before that that were just animals. They wouldn't shower. They wore the same clothes. I don't want to mention anybody, but I know one guy that wore the same clothes like for a whole month, like just didn't change, slept in them. Like, you guys really were focused. You guys had a great. One thing I really like about working with you is you guys had a great work, uh, a great work ethic. You know, speaking of which, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here he is, Mike Terror. 
What's up? Oh, What's going on, guys? Is. Happy New Year. Hey. Hey. What's up, What's up? Better late than never. Hey, man. Thanks someone's got to make the money. Yeah, no, yeah, I know. Find out, Michael. I need a sugar daddy in my life. <laughs> hey, Mike. Mike, these are these are shots you took, these ones you sent me? Um, these are just a bunch of pictures from uh, Europe. Um, I was going through the shoebox last night and uh, see what I had. So I went through a few <laughs> of them. <laughs> right. <laughs> I wish I still had that jacket. Yeah. What jacket was that? That was the Wu Tang zip up. That was a Wu Tang jacket. Yeah, that might have been from the first tour. <laughs> and there's a dude from Machine Head again. <laughs> <laughs> I think at that point I only had one dread on my head. Yeah. <laughs> it was just one. It was just one solid dread, right? One solid dread. <laughs> yeah, we had to fix him when he got home. Remember, we fixed him for you, bro. Uh, pulled out all awesome. kinds of stuff all out of there. Yeah. Forks, oh. uh, food, roaches, came all out of that shit. <laughs> Jay, what Jay, what is what is this? An Ibanez you're playing? That's actually a Spectre guitar. A Spectre. I was wondering yeah, there, about that. There weren't there, if I'm not mistaken, uh, I think there were only about twelve hundred of those made. Yeah. That was the one I broke. <laughs> that was the one uh it was my favorite guitar, and when we were playing CBs, I forget with who, I think it was in like 97 also, uh, Chico and I smashed into each other, and his guitar hit mine and broke the headstock right off my guitar. So. Oh, the man with the red guitar. Yeah. Oh, right. Now we you only know, have I, one, one lead guitarist now. It's cool. <laughs> you know, I have. I know we're, we're trying to get through the past, but I want to, you know, I think one, 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 great time I remember we had is when we went, we went up to Normandy Sound um, and we recorded uh, This Time It's Personal. And uh, I, you know what I, I remember? I remember us like wandering around that town at night. Remember that shit? It's that like fucking, a ghost town. Yeah. It's like this weird, you know, out in Rhode Island, right? And it was like we like <laughs> – we, at night, we like there was that one convenience store, remember? And then we were just—it was just this really fucking. It was really, and, and we were sleeping upstairs in, in the yeah. in, in the bunk in, in, in the bunk. But here's a, a clip I found fairly recently and and, and posted it. I can't, I can't. Uh, oh Whose dog is that? <laughs> that was mine. That was Kane. That was Kane. Yeah. Jay is not ready for <laughs> shit right there, dude. <laughs> Believe you me, it stinks up here. I got to get somebody. I forgot how steep those steps were. It was steep. The Normandy hellhole. Got a video of the neighbors that lived upstairs. Remember those creeps? Yeah. <laughs> uh oh. I'm singing like a goofball. Oh shit. Who's that? Was that Tom Suarez? Is that who we were working with? Jamie Locke. Jamie, Jamie Locke. Lock. Yeah. Jamie Locke. Jamie Locke. Jamie Locke. He was a patient. He was a patient man. We don't want to record this. <laughs> it's gonna be bad. Just woke up. <laughs> Jamie Locke, what's happening? Up to the same old, same old. <laughs> man, in an SSL, another day, out, right? another session. Lies the tape. Yo, the tape. Oh, Man, that, that's how we used to record. Oh, oh record. Shit. That's crazy. Then there was tape. There was tape. Marauder shirt. Was was tape. Good luck, Marauder shirt. I represent, man. It's time to do the leads. Put on the Marauder shirt and represent. You doing leads? I was. If you weren't gonna say it, I was gonna do. Bitch, I came down here, goddamn right. thing, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Damn, see, that's that guy I was talking about <laughs> earlier. I'm ready to beat Jay Cherry up. We're in Drip, Rhode Island. Drip, Rhode Island. <laughs> Yo, trip? Drip Rhode Island. <laughs> <laughs> Power A with Cytomax in it. 
We call it Cyto Crap because this shit will get your heart started in a minute, boy. <laughs> Mountain bike drink. Mixed it all up. Strictly for players. Players, yo. If you ain't a player, don't drink it, boy, because it will give you a heart attack. Man. You need to be strong in the inside, Especially man. Especially don't drink two of them. Two. I don't fuck around, boy. You know what I'm saying? Two. Oh, man. How about that? I had the, the date stamp on it and everything, man. Crazy. That's fucking, you know, my only regret is I didn't shoot more stuff like this back then, you know? I shot a lot of stuff, but but when I came back across this 20 years later, I was like, wow, this is gold. This shit is gold. <laughs> yo, yo, Jay, Jay, I apologize, bro. I apologize for talking to you like that, man. <laughs> You're good, bro. Yo, yo, dude. That was nothing. Yo, it sounded, <laughs> like, <laughs> yo, it sounded like I was nothing. ready to I fight you, bro. Day. <laughs> it sounded like I was going to fight you. You see what else? Oh, what? oh here's a great – this is great uh, – and I see, I know, I see that Hoyas out there. Uh, Hoya says, "A shout out to my fam, Jersey's dirtiest." I know Hoya. Uh, here hugs, you go. hugs. I got you, hugs. homie. Here's the old fucking Normandy sound. Look at this. Yes, I was. Yes, I was. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Wow. I, I never seen this. You this never saw pretty, this stuff? No. Nice. Pretty dope. This is online or no? Yeah, I posted I posted it on I posted it on uh it's up there on, on YouTube on the uh yeah. Look at that computer. <laughs> Yo, I was just about to say, look at that computer, bro. Wow. I think from 1998. That was, that was, was state, state of the art right there. That was right. like, we were on some high, <laughs> we were on some high tech shit. <laughs> Yo, it, it cost us a lot of money to record there. Yeah, and then I butt ended it. I put this, I put this from the do or die fest, but that's 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 another story story right there, but uh, that said, um, you know, as we're kind of moving on here, uh, stick. How and why did it wind down in '98? Why did it kind of come to an end back then in '98? Well, like I said, it was internal. You know, like me and the drummer were not matching. You know, his heart wasn't in it like. Like I was invested in it, you know, and it, it, it bothered me. And, you know, I used to, I used to just lash out at him. It was, it, it, it you know, in retrospect, you know, it, it was, a t it was terrible, you know, it kind of ruined the band, but, uh, you know, things happen for a reason. And here we are in 2023 and we reached out to Chris, you know, to, you know, he was offered to do this with us. He declined, you know, and uh, I wanted to sit and have a one-on-one a -on -one with the guy. He, you know, he don't want to do it. So, you know, I'm good. You know, I, I, you know, I apologize for what I did to him. You know what I mean? And I'm good with it. it you know, the way he feels is the way he feels. The band's in the, the best place it's ever been. You know, I guess posted this morning on Facebook. Musically, for me, 2022 has been the best year ever for me musically with this band i mean the vibe is it's 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 over the top you know it, it's better than it's ever been um uh, we're just vibing really hard right now and it's real you know this we take it all our hearts are all in this you know we're real dudes we work real jobs we like i said we don't make no money doing this we just do it for the love 
I have a lot to say, you know, like I got a lot of issues still, you know, but I have a lot of closure on my life. So I'm able to approach this a lot differently. And, uh, and even the fellows could tell you how much of a, a different person I have become, you know? So, you know, I just think the the sky's limits now. And I've been telling these guys all year, this is our time. And, and I really wholeheartedly feel that it's our time. And I think what's lacking in music right now is authentic emotion. You know, people are just doing it to do it. I don't just do it to do it. I do it because I got something to say. And I mean every fucking word. I put my heart into that shit. And I mean it from, from the heart, you know. And I will defend it till the end, you know. It's just who we are. It's always it's who we've been, you know. It's, it's just crazy energy that we have together in this unit you know like right on we're, we're family we're like 100 percent brothers you know what i mean we would do anything for each other and it's just it, it, you know our musical creativity is next level when we get into that practice room and then we only practice once a week we used to practice three times a week so I remember we, you guys used you know, to practice all the time you know, if we were practicing three times a week, yo, we'd be dropping songs every week. You know what I mean? They, you know, but that's, you know, we know that now it's different. You have to do that. At least you got to engage these people at least once a month with a song. You know what I mean? Or you're just going to, it's going to die off. And then the next thing's going to pop off. You know what I mean? They just scroll. You just scroll and, and you know, you'll look at you for 15 minutes and then you're gone. You know what I mean? That's what it's become, you know? Yeah. So well, we're trying to stop that, you know? We we already got, you know, the real fans feeling us, man. I just sent these guys. I don't, I put it in the group chat, didn't I? That what that dude wrote. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, this dude straight fury fan he he, he it he hit the nail right on the head you know the whole i should have i should put it up his name is tom tom he's on my facebook uh it was super dope message man i had to share it with the fellas it was really really special to have somebody that's been there from the beginning and still here now and know the in between and he spoke on it and it was real deep and it was real real dope and very moving. And this is why we do it. We do it for the real motherfuckers. I don't do it for the fake ones or the haters telling me to grow up. And uh, Listen, live your life. You know what I mean? Before you left that comment, you didn't even know what the fuck I was doing. So get the fuck out of here. I'm going to do me regardless. You know what I mean? It can't stop me. I'm going to be 55 years old. I dare a motherfucker test me. Dare you. You know what I mean? I ain't playing that shit out. Yo, I honestly will risk my motherfucking freedom. I don't give a shit. You know what I mean? I'll ruin my whole fucking life. I'm one voice away every day from ruining my fucking life, man. So, you know what I mean? And that's facts. You know what I mean? I fight them demons hard. Hard. You know what I mean? You know how many times I contemplate somebody's fucking death in my brain every day, bro? I'm fucking crazy, man. This is facts, man. So, so into all this, brought in this guy, Mikey Mayhem. Yeah, look at What's going that. on, everybody? Holy How are you, Mikey? I'm doing all support. right. I'm doing all right. <laughs> so, so, so you, so you, 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 you hooked this guy and gaffed him into the boat. Uh, this is uh, this is your new drummer. Uh, you know, uh, Mikey Mayhem. You know what I want to ask is that when I managed you guys, how come I didn't get like a cool name like? Like Jay Fury, you already Mike have Aaron. a cool name. You already how have come, a cool name. How come I didn't get like Drew Blood or like you know <laughs> Drew Stone? <laughs> Stone, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, Mikey, what? Uh, tell us about your background and and, and like kind of how how you ended up, uh, you know, uh, in 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 uh, playing but in the drummer seat with Fury. Like what bands you were in before and, and how it came to be. Well, I mean, where do you want me to start? Because I can start from, you know, just I've been playing drums my whole life. Uh, my father's a drummer, so I, I grew up playing. Um, I got into, you know, hardcore metal and all that stuff at a pretty early age. Um, my uncle actually was like really big on like New York hardcore and stuff. 
Um, so he showed me H2O, Mad Ball, uh, Bad Brain, stuff like that when I was, you know, 10, 11, 12. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough, too, to have a dad who was into a lot of different styles of music, not just, uh, you know, classic rock or whatever. Um, so I think that that really helped um, my musical development as a kid. Um, and then as, as I was growing up, a lot of my friends, older brothers and stuff, they, they all liked different types of music. I had a neighbor who was a few years older than me that was also a drummer. Um, and, and he showed me, you know, Rage Against the Machine and Primus and stuff like that. And then, if I may, if I may yeah. ask, who, who were your, who were like big drum influences on you early on when you were in that sort of uh, embryonic stage? Really early on, um, there was this dude, uh, Tony Royster Dr Jr., um, and he was like a kind of like a kid prodigy, one of the first. Um, I know now there's a lot of kids out there that, that get, you know, YouTube and Instagram, uh, you know, five, seven, ten years old. But uh, when I was a kid, there was a modern drummer festival in 97, and uh, I watched this kid, this 11-year-old kid, just destroy it on the drums, and I was like, that's what I want to do. You know, and, and at the time I was about 10 or 11 when I saw it and uh, I just really started to push myself to play and, and practice. And, you know, that's all I did every day. I would come home from school. I wouldn't do homework. I wouldn't I, I would always be like, oh, I did my homework. The teachers they didn't give me any homework, you know, uh, and I would just go downstairs and play. And then I I always happened to meet kids that were my age that also played guitar, or played bass and got together with kids, you know, at 11, 12 years old. And we would all just always write our own music. We never did really too many covers or anything. Everybody seemed right. to have, uh, you know, some kind of musical talent, at least to the point where we could write a couple of punk songs or whatever, you know, just four chords here and there. And then uh, I started to get into heavier stuff and heavier stuff. And uh, when I was about 15 <laughs> or 16, uh I, I joined a band called Float Face Down. Um, I love that name, Float me Face too, Down. Bro. Yeah, it was a. I'm about to write a song the, called that, bro. <laughs> hard, yo, hard. The 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 kid the, the the singer of that band he was a bit older than everybody else, and uh, he was doing a bunch of you know he had done a bunch of bands and stuff. So he had heard me play drums, even though I was playing guitar in a band at the time, mm -hmm. and uh, he was like, "Yo." you need to like, you need to be playing drums. I don't know why you're doing this guitar stuff. So I tried out with them. And for about three years, I, I, I played with them from like 2006 to 2009. And then after that, I joined like a prog metal band called Failure and Vanity. Um, I did that for a few years and then stopped playing for a little while. I was working a lot and uh, I, I just, you know, I was 20, 21, 22 years old, just kind of doing my own thing, getting lost in partying, stupid shit like that. And then um, met a couple of guys in a punk band and decided, you know, I should really get back into playing. And they, you know, same thing. They just, they knew I liked playing and they knew I was a pretty good drummer. So I just started doing that. And then things went up from there. And everything kind of shifted because I was in the death core, like prog metal scene for a while. And then, you know, all the same kids that I was hanging out with started getting back into hardcore and stuff. So, you know, I kind of just went with the times and, and growing up on hardcore music and, and coming up as, you know, a punk kid and a ska kid and, and a hardcore kid, you know, um, I just went back to that and did a couple other things, played with a band called Hounds for a little while we didn't do too much. We just kind of played New Jersey. And then uh, I met a, uh, I knew a kid, Tony, for a long time. He played guitar in a band called Descent. Mm -hmm. So I tried out with them. Um, and basically it was like the, the turning point for that was they got offered to play This Is Hardcore and, and the singer and the drummer had quit. So they needed, they were trying to get something together because they didn't want to not play This Is Hardcore and stuff like that. And I was like, well, I mean, that would be a huge opportunity for me um and did that for like three years and we got to go to texas california or no not california texas we did like the whole east coast so i did a lot of traveling and stuff with them then uh right before the pandemic came um you know things kind of just wound down and uh just everybody kind of wasn't in it anymore so we we decided to part ways and break up 
And then um, after, I guess, in 2021, I hadn't been playing for like almost two years. And uh, Joe Stanley from Departed reached out to me and was like, if uh, Fury of Five was to hypothetically get back together, would you, <laughs> you know, would you want to, would you want to play drums? And I was like, hypothetically, yeah, I, I would love to do that. Like in the, in like in the alternate universe where Spider-Man's in the Fantastic <laughs> Four, like if like we somehow had a portal and we went there. Sure. Know. Right. Exactly. Go ahead. Did Jay, did, did you guys put it out there that were you guys sniffing around at this point? So I was only talking to the guys in the band um, and, you know, Jimmy and I were, you know, in touch and I was in touch with Chico and Mike and we were talking about, you know, the opportunity of it would be great, you know, to get together and play together and maybe do a reunion after, you know, 25 years. And sure. um, I think, well, well, I remember we talked about that, Jimmy, when you were on the show, we were like yeah. 25, yo, that's like, that would be incredible. And, and, you know, that kind of thing. So it was definitely sort of in the air a little bit, you know? Yeah. It was, it was brewing a little bit, like kind of amongst ourselves. And uh -huh. I think that, I think it was, stick you know who's probably the most you know stayed relevant in hardcore and in the music mm -hmm. scene with all his projects and sure. and everything that he's done um over the years um and you know i think it just you know from him his conversations with with some of his people um that's how it you know maybe got over to to mayhem so you took you took the initiative stick well i, I put a post i put a post on facebook who would want to see a Fury of Five reunion? I remember, but I, that. Have, but I, but I knew Joe Stanley from the party. That's one of my my homies. You know, I, I asked him, you know, any drummers? And he said, oh, I think I think I know one. Then he asked Mikey. I said, well, give him my number. And then Mike hit, hit me up, and we talked. And I I, I sent him a list uh, of songs that we were possibly going to do. And I said, when you're uh, when you're ready. Let us know. We'll book a studio time, and then we'll go in there. And that's how it happened. You know, we made it. Uh, actually, we're coming on one year. I think it was uh, the, the weekend of my birthday was the first time we practiced. And uh, we're coming on one year together as, as a group. And we went in the room, and we were like, what song you guys want to do? And uh, I don't know. Somebody said, every man for himself. And... It just, yeah, that shit it was just, good. it was just, Chico, you explain how you, how that vibe was, bro. Yeah, I mean, we were, we were just fucking around, you know, tuning up, whatever. And, and then my man just started kicking it off. And that was a wrap. That song, it went off like we never stopped. It was, it was fucking bananas. Yep. Mike, I mean, what do you it, remember of all this? Um, It was the first practice. Yeah, we did, Uh, I think we did come and get it. And then, you know. Right into it, Jimmy just randomly just yelled, every man for himself. And then as soon as he started playing it, like, it was just like, wow. He, he was a guy right away. I knew it. Yeah. Simple as that. Yeah, that, awesome. it, that, that's the way it happens a lot. You know, it's like when a guy slots in and it just, it just feels right. Hey, let me uh, – I got to take a sponsor break. So let's take a couple-minute break here, and we're going to come back, and we're going to bring on uh, – we're going to bring on Mario – and Kim from upstate, and we're going to talk. We're going to we're going to we're going to be in the in the present and look towards the future. So I'll see you guys in a couple minutes. All right. Cool. Well, there you have it. This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles live, and our guests today are the members of Fury of Five who are back together with a new single called "War" and a new release coming out. Let's get it on. Here is a word from our beloved. Sponsors. Since 1992, Generation Records has been a mainstay of the New York metropolitan area music scene. Today, they offer a diverse selection of new and used rock, jazz, indie, hip hop, punk, hardcore, metal, blues, soundtrack, and reggae LPs, as well as t shirts, posters, and other merchandise. They buy used record collections of music memorabilia and will pay you top dollar for them. House calls made for large collections in the tri-state area. Call 
or email generationrecords at gmail.com and follow them on Facebook and Instagram. Hey guys, Vlad from Organic Grill. As you can see, we're in a new location on West 3rd Street, right by Blue Note and Comedy Cell. The place is bigger, kitchen is bigger, we have more varieties, more food. We are looking forward to treat you guys with great dishes. All Hardcore Chronicles, welcome to, to Organic Grill. We are going to serve all the events as we usually do. And we are happy to see you guys. Peace, what it do? Welcome to NYT Comics at 117 Main Street, Dobbs, Surrey, New York. I'm Debo the Pro with my homie. Lee Farley. Welcome to the spot. Specializing in yesterday's and today's comic books, rare CGCs, toys, collectibles. Got skateboards, old school tapes, Magic the Gathering, Warhammer. Video games, original art, original art pieces by your favorite New York City and worldwide artists. Let's go. Skate decks all day, baby. We also have the young reader section here for like 10, 10 and under. Uh, the pops. People love the pops. Star Wars. Star Wars. We are New York Hardcore. We always rep the scene. Let's get it off. What's happening? We're back. This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live. Our guests today are the members of the band Fury of Five. Want to mention a couple of upcoming shows to you, my friend. Wednesday, this Wednesday, there will be a show. Old school DC hardcore represent with Rob Moss of Artificial Peace and Government Issue. After that, Paul Russler uh, will be on the show. Am I still? Wait, you know what? I don't want to pronounce this dude's name wrong again and be like a heel. Um, Rossler. Yeah, I got it right. Rossler. Paul Rossler um, co hosting the show with our friend Joel Ghostin. Uh, John Lafada is on January 15th. Speaking of drummers who crush, uh, Sunday, January 22nd, Brian Harris, Death Before Dishonor. Yo, you hear it here first. This hasn't even been announced yet. Sunday, January 29th, Richie Stotts from the Plasmatics and King Flux will be on the show. This is going to be epic. Uh, this is going to be great. We got Richie Stotts on the show. Super s stoked on that. Uh, Sunday, February 5th, uh, uh, Phil uh, Demo from Violence and Machine Head, uh, Bay Area Thrash represent. I'm going to be doing a, you know, every now and then I like to do a side trip show, something a little bit different. Uh, get, get out, you know, get out there and do something different. Wednesday, February 8th, I am doing... We're doing a, a side trip show. It is a hot tuna retrospective with bass player Steve Austin, who uh, played in a hot tuna band uh, cover band called America's Choice. He also played with Yorma Kalkin from Hot Tuna. He is a uh, incredible hot tuna historian. Uh, this is a band that I love. This is a band that was a huge influence on me. I have seen Yorma and Hot Tuna play over a hundred times. I am personally very excited about about this one. Um, Sunday, February 19th, Vinny Vitale from Marauder is coming out of coming out of hiding and uh, going to be on the show. So yeah, Plasmatics coming up. Yes, Bay Area, uh, your Bay Area brother Phil, Chris Contos. That's right, Violence. You, you got that. Um, Drew, you rock, but that totally beats you reading the sponsor. Yeah, no shit. I could fucking get up for a second and fucking take a piss or dance around the room if I want. Yeah, believe me. I'm happy that, that I don't have to sit here for two and a half straight hours. Um, that said, yes, yes, yes. The hot, yes. Hot tuna retrospective. I'm excited about that. Also, let me mention, um, coming up, uh, the New York Hardcore Chronicles, back to the New York Hardcore Roots series. The next show, there's no show in January. I'm actually down in Florida screening my new film. 
uh, uh, next week. Uh, Sunday, February 12th, shutdown. Kings never die. Incendiary device. It's going to jump off tonight. End of Hope and India Vid. Uh, free All Ages Bowery Matinee. Um, Sunday, March 5th, Two Man Advantage is playing with Enziguri, Fuck It, I Quit, Non Residents, and Iconicide. And Sunday, April 30th, first New York show in 12 years, Go, appearing with Crazy Eddie, Down Low, Crippled Urn, and Chum Huffer. If it's free, it's for me. Free all ages. Sunday uh, matinee on the Bowery. So that said, um, I want to mention, shut that fucking dog up! That said, um, want to mention, yes, support the show. There is a Patreon page. I want to mention a couple of uh, my latest patrons. Uh, Anthony Mio, Mike Reed, Susan Anton, Sam C., Frankie Tires 13. Please support the show that supports you. There's also a, uh, a PayPal address there if you want to make a, a donation. This, this, is, this is like PBS. This is, this is uh, you know, your support is what enables this show to happen. Um, window cam. I should. I should shove. I should shove the camera. Who let the dogs out? This fucking neighborhood. You know something? I'm right on the fucking park, and there's a dog run here. So all these fuck brains carry their dog. You know, walk the dogs right down the street, and the dogs see each other coming and going, and they start fighting right outside my window. Don't even get me started on this dog shit. Listen, if I had it my way, there'd be no dogs in Manhattan. All right, get the hell off my lawn. Uh, that's the PayPal address. Please support the show. Uh, that said, I think we're good. Um, hey, little Freeman, what's up, man? Thank you, buddy. Happy New Year to you too, and and Happy New Year to everybody out there. And thanks for supporting the show uh, so much. We, hey, we're also doing a super chat. Uh, there's a super chat function. If you have a question for Fury of Five or any of the guys. Uh, do the super chat. It comes through in color. I can't. That's right. A dog free zone. If you elect me, Drew Stone, Manhattan will be a dog free zone. Cats are okay. You could have cats in your apartment. No dogs. My neighborhood smells like dog piss anyway. It's fucking disgusting. Anyway, all the dog lovers are going to freak on me now. Um, I'm just saying in the city here, you know, that said, Let's bring let's bring our guests back on. Chico, Stickman, Jay Fury, Mikey Mayhem, and Mike Terror. Hey, you know who wants to say hi to you guys? This guy who fucking said he was like, wait, you know what? Bro, I thought you were done. <laughs> Rap bones. What's up? What's what up? up? Done, bro. Do I have to call you William now? Is that what we got to do? We got to call you William? I actually go by my middle name, Rob, if you want to get specific. Yeah. Wow. I never knew you had a middle name, Rob. Yeah, I go by Rob. I'm out in Queens. Look how gorgeous it is out, guys. <laughs> Gee, that looks that looks stunning. What's that the view? What's that the view? What's that the view of the backyard in Astoria, Queens? That is Grandma's backyard at Astoria, Queens. Happy New Year's, everybody! Oh, you're at Stella's mom's house. Yeah. Yo, it's kind of funny. I want to say to Stickman, it's so funny that you know I've known you so long, my man, and uh, you know we were it when we walked in the room back then. I think that's the biggest difference of then and now, and we're at such opposite ends of the spectrum, like. I'm not cashing it in, but I just had it. I just have other things that are more important than music and people. So I, I just am stepping back. Uh, I'm glad you guys are back. Uh, the new shit sounds phenomenal. Uh, I was there since Locked Up in Life. You know, I've known you as a brother and a friend for many, many years, man. It warms my heart to see you guys putting it back together and really keeping it real. And, like, you're, you're going you're gonna to step the game up and take it up a notch. I guarantee that, you know? Thank you, bro. I appreciate you got it, man. You got, you, endorsed, you got endorsed by Rap Bones, you guys. <laughs> Yo, oh, me and Rap, no. we go way back there, early, you know, right? mid-'80s, man. You know, we used to fucking roll hard, you know? Let me rephrase that. You were endorsed by Rob. <laughs> <laughs> you were, 
Rob right. Bones. We right, call him Rob. Rob Bones. Hey, well, you got me back. You couldn't get rid of me, everyone, of course, right? I yeah. love you guys. Happy New Year to everyone. Jim and the boys, Fury, I wish you guys the best, man. Thanks, man. Do a Thanks, thing. Man. And, uh, Thanks, I appreciate it. Yo, Happy New Year and peace out, Drew. I saw you guys the other night. It was excellent, too, man. Good time out at Gorgo Bordello and uh, Incendiary Thank Device. Thanks, man. Yo, it was later. a trip being with all you guys for the shows and everything. I appreciated everything. And maybe you'll see me again sometime soon. All right? All right, we'll all see right, you. Man. Peace. Peace out. Love yeah. you, Jimmy. Brothers right, for life, kid. You know what it is. Listen, that motherfucker's not going anywhere. He goes on and on and on about <laughs> this, that, and the other thing. And he's always going to be rap bones. You, like, you can't uh, no, take the name away. Nobody's going to call him Rob. Who's going to call him Rob? Hey, check out our friend, yo, Walter Monster Ryan. What's up? What's up, Monster? Good to see What's you. What's up? Yeah. Good. They're coming out of the woodwork. Uh, Federico Giordano, Fury of Five Rule. If I had to guess... I would say that Federico Giordano is probably watching the show somewhere in Italy right now. But that, that's, that's just, just my take on it. Um, hey, let's bring on, uh, let's bring on Mario and Kim from uh, Upstate Records. Hey, how you doing? Hey, what's going hey, on, guys? Hey, what's up, fellas? Happy New Year, everybody. What's going Happy on? New Happy, New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year uh, to you, too. And, uh, you know... I. I was pleasantly surprised to see that that the Fury stuff, the new Fury stuff, uh, coming out on uh, on Upstate. Uh, Mario, uh, tell us uh, how did this come to be? You know, um, like Mikey was mentioning, you know, we worked with Descent, we have worked with Departed, and Stick has made you know more than a few guest spots on a couple of those bands' um, <laughs> records. And just one day, I hit them up when they're coming back and making a show announcement and just reached out on Instagram said, Hey, if you guys going to write some new material? Just keep us in mind. And, um, fast forward. And sure enough, uh, Jay hit us up, said, Hey, let's, let's get on the phone and let's talk. And we chatted for like about an hour and it all went smooth. And I got to tell you, these guys are on point, you know, one of the most professional bands we've worked with. You know, everything that we've put in front of them uh, to get this single out, they were on top of it 100%. They're, everything that these guys represent is just top notch. Yeah, like I said, what I always appreciated and respected their, their work ethic. They always had a very mm -hmm. good uh, work ethic, very focused, very professional. And they were clean guys. They were, they were an anomaly. <laughs> that helps. <laughs> so it was a bonus. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, what's the uh, fill in the the uh, the blank? What's the plan, and and what exactly is this? So this is the cover uh, yeah. for the new EP: five songs, four originals, and one um, remake yeah. from the early days. Um, the guy Juan put this together. He the, crushed it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, shout out to Juan from Primal Dude, Design. Yes, nice, nice cover, man. What, the, what, uh, stick man? What, uh, what was the sort of the process in pulling these songs together? Why these songs? And 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 what was the well, what was the, the well, plan the song, of action? The, the songs just happened organically, really. But uh, the album title is. Uh, is a play off of this time is personal, so that's why the bat was introduced. Is why there's a clock face, you know. Like we're still, we're trying to bridge this time is personal, make this the centerpiece to go forward with all the new material that you're about to hear and and whatever's coming after this little EP. You know, like I said, I already got like ten songs lyrically written for another EP, which I already have titled. And, uh, you know, like I said, I'm a theme writer. You know, I don't just haphazardly write songs. I, I write a lot of songs. I have a whole slew of songs, but like the ones I picked for Fury of Five are very like thought out and like have to have a certain attitude and vibe and go with whatever theme we're trying to bring across, you know, like 
we're working on a new song right now. And I told Jay, I think we need to touch a little of uh, that crossover sound that everybody's tapping into, like the tsunamis and the uh, power trip. You know, they got like this this crossover vibe. And I said, I you know, I think we should like do a song, something like that. And we have that in the works right now. So, you know, we're just trying to vibe off of what the people are feeling, but, you know, put our heart a fury into it, you know, the way we do it. You know what I mean? They do it, we're gonna do it better. That's just how we do that's how our thought process is, you know. We have another song coming out called uh Revenge Doesn't Sleep, and it's not finished with the mix yet. But when we drop that one, people are gonna be like, Oh shit, you know, like it's very hard, violent beat down type vibe. You know, then we got a song called Souls, Souls in the Soil, which is like like dark and um, you know, I, this, the lyrics come from a real place, man. Like I was working in Newark and I seen these kids come out of a project uh, housing building, going to school. I was there on the job for three days with a cop. Cause that's how bad the area was. And I'm seeing these kids going to school and I'm like, yo, these schools, kids go to school every day with no protection. They do, Killings on this block every day in Newark, and and I and I was watching these kids going to school, and and this whole song came to me called "Souls in the Soil," and I sent the lyrics to Jay, and he's like, "Yo, that's deep." And then I just told him what I needed to make it happen, and it happened. And the song is super, super dope. Like, it, I think honestly, like I think people are going to be very, very impressed. You know, we chose this song purposely for the drop. But the next song that's coming is better than that. The next one after that. You know what I mean? It's just going to – I think it's going to be very impressive for people to uh, see. Ma Mario, uh, Darren asks, any dates for this release and will it be coming out on CD? What do you think, fellas? Do you want to <laughs> You want to call out the date? <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's I, everything's kind of in motion still, but, you know, if, and correct me if I'm wrong, but we're going to try to drop the next song um, – on its own towards the end of January with a video, um, another video that we just shot this past week. Oh. Um, and we're, it's, it should be pretty interesting. We're excited about it. Um, and then whether we drop a third single or we drop the whole EP um, at that point will probably be in the early March timeframe yeah. is what we're looking to achieve. So within the next few months. Yeah. Right now we're, Songs are still being polished off, so we're we're hesitant to like just put it out there. But we have timelines, you know. We're we're targeting the first week in March, and it will be on CD. Absolutely, I'm excited for the video because you got Kurt from Sirius who shot it, and we know he's going to do a phenomenal job with it. Fantastic, Kim. Let me ask you, like in the current uh, climate, uh, in, in in putting out music and stuff, is it is it harder to put out vinyl or CD or like what, what is it? What, where, where is it at these days? Well, I think a lot of that all depends on the band. Some bands are going to be vinyl bands. They're, they're going to sell a lot of vinyl. Some will be CDs out in California. They're selling tapes out there more than CDs or vinyl. So it really depends on the band and what's going to fit at the time. Yeah. The vinyl lead time is still like eight months. It's yeah, it's still like really strange. Crazy. We can turn around CDs fairly quick. How long is the wait on vinyl? Eight months? Eight it to 12 be. months. Sounds yeah. like a business opportunity. We're taking forever to get our record mixed. I can only imagine what's going to be next. <laughs> no, I mean, we've come back later on with a record, record repressing, you know, after the CD and initial yeah. drop of the album. So yeah. there's options. Hey, speaking of, of music videos and how everybody's a everybody's a film director now, um, I want to ask I want to ask uh, I want to ask the Fury Five guys about this picture here, which is like it's like something out of the Warriors. I love this, yeah. <laughs> but, but but let me ask you. You know, I directed the 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 uh, do or die video back in what year was that? 97, 98? Yeah, 97. Yeah. Is that we did it in the old dilapidated casino on the boardwalk? in um asbury park right yes and is yeah. that is that the building to the left there 
Not that's conventional. Hall. So that's it's in the same spot, but on the other side of the boardwalk, I the see. the building that we shot do or die in was demolished just because it was deemed super dangerous. Obviously, you can see that. <laughs> That was an incredible location, man. That, it was like, remember there were, there were trees growing in there? and It, it was, was like Planet of the Apes. Yeah, yeah stuff crazy. on the ceiling was falling on the stage while we were recording. <laughs> that was wild, man. And, like, and, and I said it at the time. And remember how we had to sneak in? You had to like, like we had to sneak in like through the building. And it was like, it was, it was gnarly. But, um, but it, it, I remember saying at the time that like, this is like a million dollar Hollywood set. Like you'd see this in a Hollywood a Hollywood set as a million dollar set. It was this old casino with a stage with trees growing in the middle of it, and it was just it was wild, man. It's wild. Yeah. Good good shit. Ke uh, uh, convention hall. Yeah. 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 That that was. Uh, you guys played convention hall. I had that. I showed that clip before, right? Yeah, they've played, played, played it twice. twice. If I'm two or three times, yeah, yeah. I remember that alive in Wealth Fest. That was like that was a big. Yeah, we played big... the SOU uh, ten year anniversary too. That's oh, yeah, right. 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 Yeah. Alive and Well was our last show yeah. as a band in '98. Yeah. Is that yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. That was the last time we played together as a group uh, until this Asbury Park reunion this past yeah. summer. And 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 then up until that last show, Chris. Chris played drums with you till up until that last show. So you guys, did you guys, you guys never played with another drummer when that was it? That was a, not, not, with not, the not this, yeah, not this group. No, we never did. No. Wow. And then, and then you guys kind of reconvened and, and did uh, Jersey and then did uh, this is hardcore. Right. Yeah. That's a nice there, kick, Jay. Nice yeah, kick. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you stretch? I mean, stretch. Yeah, up there, Kate. That's stretching. Ouch. Hey, hey Jay. Or the next day. Hey, Jay, in those, in those kind of years in between, uh, were you like, you were kind of out of the music thing for a while? Were you, was it in the back of your mind? Like, this is someday I'd really like to do this? Always, you know, whether I was present or current, you know, in the scene, you know, it's, it was always present and current in my mind and my heart. Um, you know, Fury of Five is, you know, what made me who I am today as a, as a person, as a man, as a father, as a husband. Um, so, you know, the, the, the things that we did, you know, it, it, you know, it was, uh, it was amazing, you know, for me personally. So I always had it in my mind of, you know, it, it would be great to get together with these guys again, because as Jimmy mentioned, you know, we are family. Um, and when we get together, you know, we, we do, we do good things. So, um, it was there always in my head and, uh, you know, what was great, you know, I guess it's like a true definition of family is regardless of the amount of years that were in between the minute we saw each other, the smiles, the crack in the jokes, you know, all the, uh, all the stuff where we left off just picked right back up. So, <laughs> yeah and 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 mike terror for you uh sort of those 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 years in between uh was it always in the back of your your mind yeah because i felt like we never had like a proper send-off and uh, yeah it was a it was something that uh you know if it never happened i think i'd have a lot of regrets because i always wanted to uh at least minimum do one more send-off because we never did a proper send-off and you know yeah. i moved on I, uh, you know, just, just worked, had a family, you know, I have children. Um, that's it. You know, I, I stopped even playing probably at one point for 10 years and the, the bass just sat in a case collecting dust. And uh, during the pandemic for me, you know, I started playing again. I bought a new bass. I relearned all the songs. And then one day I seen Jimmy pop uh, on uh, uh, social media, you know, who wants to see, uh, after all this is done in the pandemic, who wants, you know, who wants to see the OGs do a reunion? And I shot him a text, I think, that day. I'm like, dude, I'm in. So, you yeah, know, life yeah. is too short, you know. You know, we had our issues in the past, maybe, but for the most part, we all love each other as a band. And, of course. you know, I'm, I'm grateful to be back with everybody because, you know, this is, this is the only thing in my life that ever felt like just this is what feels right for me. So Good. I'm grateful, and I'm grateful to you guys. 
and I'm happy. I'm so happy to see you guys together. Hey, Chico, I think the last time I saw you, for some reason, I have this memory. I was with I was with my kid, and we went out to um, what's the place in Jersey? I saw you in this club in Jersey. Bulldoze was playing. I was with my son. Um, the Starline. No, what's that fucking dump that's still there? The fucking club and ding bats, ding bats, oh. ding bats. And you, I think you were playing on that bill too. I think that's the last time I saw you. Uh, I don't know if you. I, I seem to remember it for some reason, but uh, it, it's got to be. It. We're talking. That's got to be now. Yeah, that was a long time ago. Was I? I was playing. Uh, I was filling in for Shadow Realm. I think. Yes, that, yeah. that's that's what it was. Um, and how about you? Was this something that was always sort of in the back of your mind? Oh, absolutely. That's when when we broke up, man. That like crushed a big part of my life with this. And like same, same, like the guitar went in the case and went in the closet and I didn't look at it again. <laughs> but yes. but I gotta I gotta give Jimmy props, man. As as crazy as that motherfucker was, musically he brought out the best in all of us. So there's like no about there, there ain't nobody else I'd rather be on stage with than these guys. That's awesome. Thanks, man. Oh, I got, I got a little tear. It's like, I don't cry, dude. Only in the shower, bro. <laughs> uh, they hope you take a shower afterwards. Stick, how many shows have you played? Like so far, is it two or three or four? We played four shows. All right. We played uh, Asbury was our return. And then we did This Is Hardcore. And then we went out to California. Oh yeah, and, right. I saw and that. And California is 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 popping right now. Like I wish sometimes I wish I lived out there. You know, mm -hmm. yo, that's yo, yo, these bands, Mental. yo, Mental. They, Mental. Uh, yep. yo, the vibe, the vibe is different. It's different. Like, did you play like, Oakland? Where did you play? Yeah, we played Oakland. And, <laughs> oh, and, that's why the Oakland and, guys and, are all chiming in, right? Yeah, that powerhouse. Yeah. Okay, Oakland. Long Beach. Yeah, that's and, and Long Beach. Beach. But like the ah, scene, Long the Beach. scene out there is different. It's not like here. It, it's yeah. uh, it's real. Like it has a '90s vibe. Like something that like yeah. I'm real, real drawn to. Like I, I like I want to get back out there. You know, like. It's our people out there. I'm telling yeah, you, those were hard, man. They were a good time, and the bands are awesome, man. You got like this Madre Momentum section, Hate These Streets, Law of Power, a slew of other bands are just straight crushing. You know, like real street bands, like bands that I like, like fuck with. You know, like yeah, you know, I don't fuck with a lot. I tell you straight up, man. I just went to a show Friday night and just walked out. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, like. And no disrespect, I mean, these dudes are not throwing a vibe that I feel, you know what I mean? And not, you know, not, not discrediting their talents, you know what I mean? It's just like, that's ah, not real to me, you know what I mean? They don't mean yeah. that shit they're talking about, you know? But out there in California, they live in it, and I love it, you know? Did you play, did you play with Scowl? Uh, Who's Scowl? Who's Scowl? We played no, nah, we, did, we didn't play with Scowl. No. Scowl, they, they, um... They're like they're doing a lot with that band Gel. They they both have uh, female singers. Uh, they're they're awesome bands. They both they're both really great. Gel's from this from from Jersey, and then Scowl's like the West Coast, you know, got it. style. But they they they're cool. They they didn't play that weekend though. It would have been cool if they did though. Um, you know, uh, we're gonna take a take another quick break, and we're gonna come back. We'll take some questions from around the world. But Mario and Kim, you know, I want to thank you guys. You know, upstate has really uh, gained momentum in, in the past couple of years. You guys have done a lot of really great work, and uh, you've just been the home and, and uh, to so many great bands and given them the opportunity to get their stuff out there. So I want to thank you. I know a lot of other people really appreciate that. I know it ain't easy, and I know that racket ain't easy, man. So anybody you want to thank or shout out, Mario and Kim? Hey, you know, obviously, Drew, thanks for having us on. And Always. we're completely honored to be working with, with the Fury guys. You know, it's it's a perfect match for us, perfect style, and really looking forward to dropping this one. I think people are going to be blown away by it. Mm -hmm. Super stoked. Definitely yeah. looking forward to what next year is going to bring with these guys. Super excited. Happy New Year's to you all. Yeah, you too. You too. Thank, Thank you. Happy New Year. Thank, Thank you, you so guys. much. We'll talk to you soon. Take care, guys. Take care. Okay. Peace.
Hey, yo, look what I found at the break, right? It's a, it's a, it's a strip. It's like, you know, upcoming shows from this, from, uh, from the space of chase. And for some reason it was turned over and on the back. <laughs> Sob. Awesome. Sob's fucking phone That's number awesome. in, in, in <laughs> sunset park. His, his fucking phone number it was parents house in sunset park. That's awesome. It's kind of shit that turns up in the stone films. NYC archives. <laughs> You know, holy shit! And then, and then also, wait, I, f- I found this uh, right next to it—the old insane clown posse Jekyll Brothers sticker from the tour that we did with Biohazard, nice. Biohazard, and the clowns. Jesus, <laughs> who's going chicken hunting? We's going chicken hunting. We did that. <laughs> Remember that? that video. I know, I, I know. Video. Yeah, Paris Mayhew directed it. I produced it. Um, you know what? Before we take a break, let's do one here. Who remembers the show from Croatia? I do. Oh my god! I do. That's a club. That's the club where it was raining inside, right? With the sweat (laughs) from the ceiling, right? That's That's the club that they told us not to go anywhere except for the tour bus and the club. Oh no, no, no! That that was a different show. That was Czechoslovakia. Croatia is where I got my ring stuck on my finger from dancing, right? Remember, I crushed my thing. My I had these rings I used to dance with with spikes and shit, and. Integrity was playing, I forget what song that I loved by them, and I went fucking ham in the fucking pit, and I crushed the f- ring. Like, Chris had to get, like, shit and, like, pry them off my fingers, remember? What, like, what, what, the ring crushed around your finger? Yeah, like three of them. <laughs> like I- <laughs> that sounds painful as fuck, man. Those kids went fucking crazy over there. They were mad that at was, me for dancing crazy. like that. They were like, what the fuck is wrong with you? I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they, yo, the, yo, they were so serious about like, like, uh, what, if, like, what, like, finance wars. Dr- I was drinking Coca Cola, and the dude was pissed off at me because he said Coca Cola supported the wars, and he wanted to take the drink from me. I was like, this dude is crazy. Yeah. Well, that, that that was. They said we were the first show after like the war, like it, it ended. Ah. Yeah. yeah no, we they, the- they take shit like that seriously over there. It's like you. You know, you fucking farted three years ago, and it smelled like this, and therefore you're a Nazi. And it's like, whoa, whoa. No, we played, we played uh, Yugoslavia. <laughs> we played Yugoslavia in the in the city hall, and then next year they had the war there, and the place got blown up. Wow. wow. Yeah, that's why there's no. That's why there's no TV. Yugoslavia no more. It got taken over, right? Hey, let's let's uh, you know I, you know what I got I got questions. Let me take a quick break here. We'll come back and we'll take some questions from around the world. Okay, I'll, sounds I'll good. See, I'll see you guys in a minute. Yes, this is true. This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles live. Yo, post your questions, man. Uh, the show's probably gonna go a couple minutes over today. Uh, I'm not in a rush. Are you? Hey, I want to mention that uh, this is it. This Saturday. I think it's this Saturday, right? January 8th, this Saturday. I will be in Sarasota, Florida, screening my new film, The Jews in the Blues. If you are in the Sarasota, Florida area, come through. I'd love to see you. My film is screening with the short film, The Last Blintz. Blintz. Oy vey. That's it. My new film is doing the festival circuit. Um... And uh, this Sunday, I will be down in Sarasota. I will be doing a post-film screening uh, uh, Q&A, answering questions. That's Sarasota. And then tickets are going on sale, I think, very soon. I think in a couple of days. On February 11th, I will be back down in Florida. My film is the closing film of the Palm Beach Jewish Film Festival. And I will be down there doing a Q&A. Anybody down in that area, please come through. I'd love to see you. Uh, there's some hard, there is some hardcore in this film. There is some hardcore in this film. So, you know, uh, I'd love to see you. That's, uh, that's what's going on. Um, what else did I think I covered a lot? Um, if you're watching the film in rerun, as in not live, there is a subscription button right there. Please subscribe uh, to the YouTube channel. 
so you get alerts. And also, if you're on Instagram, please follow the show and myself on Instagram at Stone Films NYC. Pick up your communication device right now and follow me on the evil Instagram platform. Uh, once again, uh, please support the show. There is a uh, Patreon page. There's also a Super Chat function. There's a, there's a PayPal address. Show needs your support. We must continue doing these shows. We cannot be deterred. We can be deterred, but we don't want to be deterred. Um, that said, let's clear the deck. There's your PayPal address. Let me see. I feel like I'm forgetting something. I guess not. Oh, you know what? Thank you. Thanks for reminding me. This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live, and we are sponsored by blah, 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 and DTFM Vinyl Distro. Looking for extreme music? DTFM Vinyl has got you. Located on 13th Ave in Fargo, North Dakota, we have the state's best selection of punk, hardcore, metal, ska, oi, and more. Can't make it in? Shop online from anywhere in the country at www.dtfmvinyldistro.com. DTFM Vinyl, where the policy still is and always will be death to false metal. Last but not least, Joe Rumini and the Texas Silver Rush. They're a jewelry design firm and boutique store located in the birthplace of the Texas country music scene in Fredericksburg, Texas. They specialize in working with musicians in all music genres to design and create unique one-off pieces, as well as to style them for stage, album covers, promo photos, and social media exposure. Their client list includes Rock Roll Hall of Famers, Greg Rolay, Ringo Starr, and of course, Agnostic Front. Information and online sales are being taken at their Facebook and Instagram pages. And of course, www.thetexassilverrush.com. That said, yes, Happy New Year. Let's bring our guys back on. Fury of Five. Let me clear the deck. What the heck? Mikey Mayhem, Jay Fury, Stickman, Chico, and... Oh, I might run over. My, hey, Mike Terry, get it together. I found some <laughs> Look at that. They, oh, what's that? Day. What's that, Stick? It's a poster from Europe. Ah. I got another wow. one, too. Nice. Yeah. Oh. oh, that poster is dope. Nice. Cool. Let's take a couple of questions. Let's see what we got. Um, well, when is the next Fury of Five show? So we don't we don't have anything booked yet, but definitely, I would say you know, right around record release at at the latest, you know. Yeah, that probably makes sense, right? Yeah, yeah, we're really in no rush to, you know, get. I don't know, man. Shows. We're we're more focused on the material. We want to get this record, and you know, we want to. Highlight Mayhem because he did some phenomenal drumming, you know, like, you know, this record's very important right now. It's like it, it's it's going to just bridge us into the the next level that we want to go to. So, you know, we're not really in a rush. We're just really focused on producing these songs to where they need to be, you know, and I got a lot of good feedback and it says it's like just taking off from where this time is personal and it's better. So we're getting a lot of, it's better than what we've done, which was part of, you know, the plan of all this, you know, and Mikey's drumming is just next level. You know, he vibes with us so well, you know, and just, he's got the chops that we need to make this fury thing. He touched it. No, the, Mikey did his homework. That's what he did. Like, he goes back in the catalogs. He goes deep. You know, there's songs that he brings up that, well, we should play this one or, you know what I mean? Like, so he's done his homework and he's sitting in that seat like an original member, not like a higher gun or or some, some dude that's just going to fly by night. He's very vested like the rest of us. So, you know, we just focus on on the on the material getting more new material with him on it you know what i mean so we can move away from some you know songs that we've been playing for years you know but most of our catalogs not even dated you know because we didn't represent it like 
these bands have like a hate breed or you know yeah. like you know gnostic fronts you know and chromags you know like our material was never really given to the people like we never played this time as personal until yeah. you know i started back in 2010 no, I didn't do it in 2000. Maybe I did in 2010, but definitely 2014. But, you know, we didn't really introduce it until Mayhem came and we played a whole bunch of songs off there, like Never and, and uh, you know, just Can't Thomas Curtis, and... Can't Escape. We never played those songs live until. The yeah, reunion. I mean, if, if yeah. I remember correctly, when, when, um, when the, uh, the, la with the last record, this, it, this time it's personal, came out, right? You guys didn't even. I think I don't think you guys played live after that, no, right? No. Yeah. No. The, the album came out. I think two years after we broke up. Something yeah. Like that. Yeah. I, I, we were, I remember because we I remember we took that photo session. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I got that picture on my phone. You know what I'm talking about, Chico? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That photo session, like, you know, that that yeah, two two years later, but. What label did that would that come out on Victory? What did that come out on? Well, we Century were Media? we were on Century Media was King our Fisher. parent company. Kingfisher. Um, right. Kingfisher, Century Media. And then, you know, not to rehash, but when the first record with them at War with the World was coming out, uh the AR guy in uh the US for Century Media was not a fan of Fury of Five and basically wasn't making it a priority and was like, Listen, you guys are on our back burner. And we were like confused at the time. So we had met Tony from Victory, and uh, he was interested, and we ended up licensing uh, those records to Victory just for the U.S. and Japan at I the see. time. So, right uh, here's uh, here's uh, here's one. Uh, let's see who would be best apt. Maybe maybe you stick. Uh, Chris Spikey asks, can they speak of the first time they went to Europe? Were the PC police out? When we first went, if you said motherfucker, they'd get pissed and say, why you say motherfucker? What's wrong with fatherfucker? LOL. So the first time you went over there, Stick, what was it? Uh, what, was, how were you received? <laughs> we, <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't give a fuck. Yo, yeah. we were, right. How's that yeah. sound? <laughs> we, yeah, we, we, uh, we weren't received. <laughs> <laughs> we weren't received yo i was a straight lunatic i walked off stage multiple times i've called germany a bunch of nazis you know jimmy like, actually I, drop kicked somebody right off the stage you know <laughs> remember that I told, one i told a whole country to go kill themselves and play <laughs> sod cover you know and, and that was live on a radio station or something you know like uh they didn't. They they didn't accept us until we went over there with propane. It was like a different vibe, or a different crowd. Yeah, Integrity had their own crowd. Like uh, they only came for Integrity. Mm -hmm. It was insane. I mean, some of the Eastern countries, Belgium, a little bit of France. You know, on that Eastern side, they knew Fury, or or they had no reason to smile, and 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 it was good. But when we got to Germany. Rough. It was yeah. It was, it was really Germany was really still don't like us. I bet you MOD will never bring it. Uh MAD will never bring us over there. They don't like Fury of Five, bro. Yeah, well it, it was a little better the second time around now, but well, I did get days. hit by I just did recently get hit up by uh some kind of touring uh deal over there. Want to work with us, so it's cool, man. You know, you Germany know never Germany never liked this. You know what I mean? I was like, whatever. <laughs> Even stuff like was a long it, time ago. It's a new world we live in now. It is. It's a new world. Yeah, it'll still hate us. <laughs> but it even when I even, even when I did it in, in 2015, we had lost a show, and uh, it was Berlin. Madball was doing a rebellion uh, tour, and we tried to get on there. They weren't even going to let us on there. But Hoya told them, "That's my my dude. They're playing." You know what I mean? If Hoya and, and Freddie and Mabel didn't say, oh, they're going to play, they wouldn't even give us a, a, a thing. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like, you know, and this is what I'm saying. Like, we've been canceled from 1994. Right. Facts. You know what I mean? So, so anything so anything we get here is a bonus at this point. But right? Listen, yeah. you can't, listen, <laughs> you can't stop the unstoppable. You know what I mean? Right, right now we have a platform. And we can do whatever the fuck we want. You know what I mean? We can put put our music where we want. You know what I mean? Like 
I don't have to, you know, necessarily need a booking agent to go over it anywhere. You know what I mean? Like, I book my own shit. You know, it is what it is, you know? Yeah. But we uh, don't Sandy care. Says, Sandy says, Rotterdam show with propane in 98 was off the hook. That yeah. was, yeah. Rotterdam. A lot, a lot of our shows with yeah. propane were really, really dope. That Really, like, good friends of ours, you know, like, you know, I see Rob on the Instagram. He, he's got some band going on. Uh, uh, it just, that was a good tour for us. If we, if we didn't break up, I think it would, you know, we would have just kept it, but that's what we're here to do now. You know what I mean? We're back in 2003 with Mikey Mayhem and, uh, we got some, we got some, we got some songs, man. Like, like some real heartfelt shit, man. I don't think a lot, uh, I don't think, you know, maybe the, the newer, uh, you know, pronoun crowd is going to really like it, but listen, real, real people are going to like Fury five. We always been that band. Fury always had its own fan base. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. You know, so like, yeah. we're good. We good. We, you know what yeah, I mean? So we, that, that, that ties in with this, uh, you know, and I, I know it's a tough one to answer, but like, who, who are your peers? Who would you like to tour with? Who, 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 who do you feel like would, would, would constitute a, a a good package. Listen, <laughs> we talk about this a lot because of how we deliver our our material. Nobody wants to go on after us, man. You know what I mean? Like it's hard, man. Like you know, Biohazard coming back. That's one of my favorite bands of all time. You know what I mean? I just gave them props. You know, somebody posted Evan wearing a Fury Five jersey. Yo, I, you know, Biohazard, you know, is the foundation of Fury of Five. Like, you know, like the backbone, like that's what we got compared to when we first started was Biohazard, which bothered me because I didn't think we sounded like Biohazard. We had the same kind of energy and stage presence. And eventually we worked ourselves away from that. But I got nothing but love for, for Biohazard and for what they've done. They're like, they're that band. They were a game changer band, you know? Absolutely. They but, paved the uh, way for a lot of stuff. But yeah. for me personally, I'd rather tour with bands that are not like Fury of Five, more on the metal side of things, maybe, mm -hmm. you know, you know, I like, I like to tour with like Knock Loose. I, I love Knock Loose. Those, those guys are dope, you know, uh, you know, Slaughter to Prevail, you know, bands like that, you know, like that are on a different genre or, you know, speaking different of, crowd speaking, base. Speaking of the young kids, I saw you did a guest spot with the with the Reaching Out Kids a while ago. Awesome. Awesome yeah. band, man. That's fan. You know, and, but it's, it's, it's funny, it's just, family, as I, though. just as I said that. Beto posted something just as I said <laughs> that it was like secret. It was like synchronicity. <laughs> Reaching out is a, is a great, great young band, you know, and I think more older bands should start like fucking with the young bands instead of being like they're better than them or that I've been around for so long. I, I don't have that mentality. I fuck with you if you fuck with me. You know what I mean? If we cool, we cool. If we're not, well, then fuck you. You know, you <laughs> that's just how I am, you know, but reaching out, like when I first heard their demo, you know, they did the side by side cover. These kids yeah. are about the roots and they're, and they're, 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 they're in the hardcore mindset. You know, they watch, I, you know, I sit at Beto's house and they watch YouTube videos of youth crew bands and hardcore bands and new hardcore bands and old hardcore bands. So I was like, yo, let's do a, let's do a feature. And it was all about it. So it came out pretty dope, you know? Yeah. You know, I'm about to do a feature with a new up and coming band in New Jersey called Bayway. We are about to hit the studio. Bay Bayway? Bayway. 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 It's an industrial area in Elizabeth and Linden. Got it. it's, it's called Bayway. It's like a refinery area. And that's where the name comes from. And uh, the real dope dudes, Big Fury and E Town, uh, concrete fans. So, like, I fuck with that. You know, you show me respect, I'll get up on your shit and bless you. You know what I mean? And, 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 cause I'm all about, you know, New Jersey hardcore scene. I've always been that guy trying to build it and, uh, you know, always looked out for bands back in the day. I'm still the same mentality. Even when we did, um, 
the Asbury Park show, you know, put on all New Jersey bands, Threats to Society, Hold My Own, um, Departed, Reach It Out, you know. What is so, what is uh, Mikey, uh, um, Mike Terror? You sent me this photo. I don't know what what is this. This, this is the this, this is the Warp Tour from uh, uh, Tour ninety seven or ninety eight. Ninety seven. Okay, right. That's, that's yeah. Legit. So so there's some good pictures. There's there's yeah. all our people on stage. Bapo. Yeah, I see. I was wondering what this yeah. was. I could tell it was outdoors. I see the street the street light behind Jay, and I'm like, where's this? We were playing on like a truck platform, I think. Ah. It was a tractor trailer bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know. GYMT says, not many bands returning after a long time can keep it up, but Fury of Five actually does. I mean, we're years later, and the energy's still there, and they still play as tight as back then. As back then. Mad respect for that. A absolutely. Respect. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, I like this. This is a very good question. Uh, you know, uh, Jay, maybe you could feel this one from Pat Baldwin. Do they feel like the craziness and anger is a key ingredient of the band's magic? Being older and wiser, is the band's chemistry different now? Um, it's a good question. It is. It's a very good question. I good think question. that if, if you have the type of intensity or been through the things that most of us have been through growing up and in our lives, even as you grow and you become more mature and you become wiser and older, you still have that pilot light burning inside, right? Mm. Like just like, just like a furnace, you know, that pilot lights there. So it's real easy, you know, to, to tap into that. And uh, that's, that's, I can speak for me. That's, that's with me for life. Um, and uh, you know, that's what drives you know the music that I like to play and the riffs that I like to write and the intensity that I can tap into right now or anytime I step on or off a stage. So definitely, I think, you know, to, to play music like this, to play Fury of Five, you have to have, you know, that intensity. Uh, but even years later, um, you know, being more mature and, and more in control, um, you know, we, it, it's not hard at all for me at least. So. Yeah. Good. Uh, uh, stick anything to add to that? I'm just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm straight you up crazy. Determine that. Uh, listen, you know, I got mad demons, mad voices. I talk to myself all the time. I got to get it out. I got to hear it. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it's just who I am, you know. I'm I'm more I'm more dialed in as a person, you know what I mean? Like Jay said, I've grown, you know, We've grown, you know, I'm more mature. I'm not off the handle, you know, but when I have a moment or something, you, you know, I get on the phone with Jay and I'll be like, ah, oh, I'm not, you know, I, I, you know, not, not to be like super crazy. I had a moment and it's why I didn't go to the mix. You know, I told Jay, I don't think it's a good idea. I go, I'm just very upset about it. And um, I stayed home. You know what I mean? I, and I thought it was the right thing to do, the right decision. And now I'm in a better place. The song is where it's at. And, you know, but at that moment, I didn't know what I was going to do. You know what I mean? So I'm still unpredictable to a degree and I understand who I am. So now I can be like, well, that's not a good idea. You should just stay home. And Jay said, yeah, I think you should just stay home. I said, that's what I'm going to do. And that's why I didn't go to the mix because I didn't know. I'm not the one to bite my tongue. You know what I mean? Like, and, and I, and I just, you know, I just had to do what I had to do. You know what I mean? Because I'm a fucking lunatic. <laughs> At the end of the day, I am fucking crazy, bro. I've yeah, never been diagnosed by a doctor, but I'm self-diagnosed crazy. <laughs> it is. I love it this is. from, uh, from Reverend Nikki bullets, uh, from the car bomb parade. I think it's super important to note that every hardcore kid has that pilot light. It's one of the great unifiers in us. That's great. No doubt. Right on. That, 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 makes, that makes a lot of sense. Well, uh, hardcore, hardcore was made on anger. You know what yeah. I mean? For, well, like, for me anyway, in the 80s, it was all people with the same yep. attitude, came from nothing, broken homes, and, and uh, you know, just bad, bad spots and, you know, I went to hardcore shows to to vent 
You know, I, I was drawn to the violence and the anger and the intensity that these bands were giving off, you know, like, you know, was what it was. Even when I was messed up and young and on drugs and drinking, I would still go to Youth Today shows and Youth Crew shows and, and throw down like fucked up and still feel what they were saying, even though I was altered. You know what I mean? You know, I went there for that energy. You know, the energy is to me now is not the same, you know, it is what it is. I, I, I try to, you know, prep Jay for like shows and stuff, you know, damn, look at that book. That's dope. <laughs> yeah. I thought, I'm like, know. what is this dude put his arm around me for? That's what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mike sent me some good, good, good stuff, you know, let me see what else. Um, I just try to get through all the. I like to get through all the photos, you know. Get get through everything. Uh, let's see what else. Um, anybody else have any questions out there? Yo, post post them up. We're winding it down here. Our guests are Fury of Five. As we as we as we head into the future, let me see what else we got. Um, yes, we did Croatia. Yes, 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 yes. Well, yeah, we talked about this, didn't we? In late 96, I saw Fury of Five at Wetlands. It was Agnostic Front, H2, Maximum Penalty, Hatebreed, and Fury of Five. Yeah, any memories from that crazy show? Uh, Mike, I don't know if you saw – Mike, Terror, any memories of Wetlands in any of that? Yeah, I remember um... – I think we played maybe Wetlands prior with Madball. Like, like yeah, I think you did I, earlier. I did listen yeah. to it on the way home from work. Um, yeah, no, it was a great show because you know it was the first time Agnostic Front was getting back. You know, for how many years, and it was a big deal. So for us, it was you know it, it elevated us to a to another level, and you know us us getting shows in New York was always good because you know Jimmy always had you know he had a lot of ties in New York, so. You know, it was always hard back then to get shows if you were from a different state. So, for us, it was it was great. It was it was a great show all around. You know, even Hatebreed was there and Axum Penalty. It was, it was just a great all around show. It was it, it was, was off the hook. It was hard just to get shows if you were a Jersey band. Period. Yeah. In New York. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, did this know. show happen? This Agnostic Front show at the Roxy? No. no so, somebody said no. No. Never happened. Because that's a look at this bill. AF. Warzone Marauder, Fury of Five, Hapery, like shut down. Holy shit, shit. That would have been a good one. Damn. Never never yeah. happened. Yeah. Here's here's another one. And I know, you know Jay, we, we we talked about some of this stuff, but um you're a band that I don't necessarily connect with CBGBs, but here's a I hate God Sub Zero Fury of Five breakdown standpoint at CBs. Yeah. Oh, we, oh, we, we played them? We played CBs actually multiple times. I think I think played with Marauder. Was Tyler booking the shows there? I think. Yeah, I think and, so. Yeah. And uh, also, same situation. You know, like the Wetlands. It was it was rare that Jersey bands were were playing on was those that, shows. And, I was in uh, Standpoint at that time, wasn't I? Yeah. Yeah. And and we uh, and we had the opportunity. I think we played CBs maybe four times, three, four. We definitely times. played with Marauder there. I yeah, we played play. with Marauder. Yeah. Um, I think we played with Madball once the at orphans. CBs. Yeah. You know, um, and uh, yeah, we we were we were lucky enough. But as far as New York goes, just me personally, I, I actually Wetlands was like my favorite place. Yeah. I, I I connect you guys with Wetlands. Like I I, I maybe it's because that's the, at the time I was managing you guys, and and I you guys you guys played some absolutely crushing shows at wetlands man I mean, wetlands I mean, had an interesting vibe you know yeah, you know, yeah. the setup was just like wasn't yeah, well, typical, it was you know sound system was on point you know stage was like sideways you know everything was weird there but it was like something about it, it was a, a, a real hard vibe at the wetlands here's another wetlands show right here uh madball bulldoze three or five district nine at wetlands that show was off the hook wow yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, Scott Trav Scott Travis says I saw Fury at CBGB with Bloodlet and VOD. Oh, oh shit. 
People remember shit. I like when people remember <laughs> shit that I don't remember. It gives me back. It gives me back my memories. You know, it, it's kind of. I, I like that. It, it, I, I'm just got, you know. I just have all this stuff in my in my archive just from you know doing the films and the book. But here, here here's an interesting one. Uh, is the right track in in Freeport, Long Island? All Out War, uh, Fury Five. What is this? One one time. What, what's one, for one. one for one. One for one. One for one. Jersey Band. Yeah. At the right track in. What by my that's quite a journey from from down there at Asbury Park out to out to Freeport. I, I remember that show. That was Me like that, that was a cool place. Yeah. It was cool. Yeah. Oh wow, this is a good one. Uh Charlie Mecca says, I remember being eleven or twelve years old and seeing Fury and VOD at the Stone Pony with my mom Sue. Never forgot, I bent down to tie my shoe and suddenly saw all the water rushing out because <laughs> someone decided to hang on the water pipe and break it. Definitely a scary time, ha. Huh? That was our record release party, wasn't it? That was our record release. That's the last time we ever played the Snow Pony. Yeah. <laughs> that was at War with the World when that War that, with the World first came out. Yeah. That, that was Candiria, VOD, and us. Yeah. 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 Yep. That we that was, had to put plastic yeah. over the equipment. Remember, we yeah. had plastic over the equipment. They had to turn the lights on and stop the show and sweep the water off the floor. They were going to shut the show down. We, they were going to shut the show down. We wouldn't let them. Yeah, we they wouldn't let them. Yeah, uh, we, Scott yeah, we asked, used to run that shit. That's probably this, why we can't play there anymore. <laughs> to, to this day, 25 years later, you still can't play the Stone Pony. <laughs> no, they don't do that genre there no more. No, yeah. no, nah, nah, they don't. I, yeah. Uh, Scott, at, Scott they just have a sheen head play there. Yeah. Allegedly, yeah. <laughs> Does Stickman remember the last Studio One show when Bulldoze came on? Rest in peace, Kevin C. I'm not sure what he's implying there. No. Did but something I happen? The, I remember the show where Kevin One hit the dude with a simple stand at our show. Oh, <laughs> now, now. <laughs> that show. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, Kevin Hegg says, Stick, I saw when you sang with Reaching Out at William Hebrew Park during the pandemic. Who was the other band you joined in with? You didn't, I, I don't, did you sing with another band that day? I don't think so. Yeah. Maybe Departed? Did they play? I, I'm not I, sure. I, I just remember, I have footage. I shot footage of you doing, you know. Yeah, I know. You uh, could yeah, Pepe remember. says, "LOL, Stone Pony, no more hardcore, except, except many hardcore shows. So sick of it all. Not that long ago, you know, sick of it all. Played that was four, it was years ago already, you know. Yeah, I think the only genre they don't book is Fury of Five genre. Right. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Dwayne says, "Shout out to the casino skate park shows in Asbury." Okay. You know, ever, I don't yeah, know if we played there. Did we play? No, we never skate played. Park? We were no, there. That was, that was after us. Yeah, we were we hung out there, but we never played there. Do you have any memories of this place, Coney Island High? Yeah, that was a good show. I remember that one. Yeah. Yeah. Crutch, yo, five. Crutch, yeah. Crutch shut down Fury of Five Terror Zone. Yeah, yep. Coney Island, Coney Island High was a thing for a while, man. That yeah, was a good was. place. Yeah, I'm dealing with that with my new book. Is like there was there was a moment there for a couple years where Coney Island High really had it going on, you know. So. Right on. Well, hey, look. That said, let me uh, let me just say that the new single on Upstate Records is "War." And I want to thank you guys for coming on. Uh, love you guys. Uh, we, we we share so, some uh, some history together, and it really it really warms my heart uh, to know that you know the original guys. Uh, you, you know, you guys uh, got uh, are back together and sounding great. And I know there's going to be a bunch of great shows coming up. And, and at some point, I'm going to have to kind of pitch you guys. You guys got to come and play Bowery Electric to, you know, to, to our thing up here at Bowery Electric. And, uh, you know, that said, uh, I guess we'll, we'll start with you, Mikey Mayhem. Uh, you want to shout anybody out? You want to thank anybody? Uh, thanks to Joe for, you know, throwing this at me. Um, I never thought in a million years I'd be doing this. And, uh, you know, thanks to you guys for 
having me come along and play with you because, uh, you know, like I said, I'm super grateful to have you guys in my life uh, besides playing. So, you know, uh, just as friends and, and, you know, getting to know you guys has been really awesome. Um, shout out to my father. Uh, I don't know if he's watching this or not, but uh, he's been hanging around a lot. And, uh, you know, he likes he likes the band and he likes, you know, seeing me, um, you know, just uh, do do cool shit. So shout out to him. Shout out to my friends who supported me, my, my girl who supports me a lot, um, my family. So that's really it. Um, you know, to all the guys who I've played with over the years as well, they've, they've always, you know, still to this day, they always shout me out and, and, you know, congratulate me on all the stuff that I get to do. So thanks to all them. Fantastic. Thanks, thanks, a thanks, lot. Thank you to you to, to uh, having us on too. So my pleasure. I do it cause I love it. We'll talk to you soon, Mikey. Have a good night. Thanks. You too, man. Yep. All right. You guys, you guys, uh, you guys got the right guy. That's good. You know, he feels like no, he's a good, good drummer, man. Yeah, he's a yeah. beast, man. He's a yeah. beast, and he's a, and he's a, and he's a good dude. You know. Well, that that counts, you know. And 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 I and I can yeah. Uh, Kevin Hegarty says, "Can't wait to see you guys at the Barry Electric." <laughs> um, listen, I, I can relate. You know, we're back. We're doing our thing, and at this at this stage of the game, you want to have the right guys on the boat, man. You know, it's like that. You want to have everybody on. You know, you want to have everybody that you can, you know, you know, relate to, get along with, be on the same page with that shit, that shit, that shit's important, you know? Um, so that said, Mike Terry, you want to, you want to thank anybody? It's Sunday shout out. Day. You want to thank anybody? Uh, I just want to thank my band. Um, you know, it's, it's been a great year. Um, I'm, I'm honored, um, to be back with these guys and doing it again. Uh, shout out to my girl, Barbara. Um, Shout out to my son, Michael. Um, shout out to my daughter, Maya. She actually passed away in 2013 um, of cancer. So I just want to give her a shout because, you know, pretty much, you know, when I dig deep, I always think of her. Um, my mom also, too, I lost this year. So, you know, and uh, also my dad who passed several years ago. I want to give him a shout, too. They always encourage me to do music and uh, just want to make them proud. And, uh, you know, all the people that support us. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks, Mike. We'll talk to you soon, brother. All right, man. Take care. All right. Good night. Chico, you're, Chico, you're up. Anybody you want to thank? Shout out? Uh, same thing as Mike, man. I got to thank all these guys. That, like I said, like that from that first practice, looking over and seeing how everything went, when we played every man for himself, yo, it was fucking spine chilling just to be with these guys again. And, you know, Drew, thank you. My pleasure. It's good, it's good to talk to you, man. It's, you know, a long time since seeing you in the back of the band. <laughs> yeah, we had some good times, man. We had some good times. I'll but, talk to you later, Chico. But uh, yeah, like again, like I said, I gotta thank these guys. I gotta thank my girl because, yo, know, Boo does everything for me now. So like I, <laughs> I can't, I couldn't do any of this shit without her. So, and good, you know, thank the fans, man. You guys are great, and Jimmy, again, you know, for keeping this shit alive. It was. Dude, this this is all just like unreal. It, it's, unreal. Not, it, it's nice, right? It's, <laughs> 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 fuck, 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 keeping it real. Fuck keeping it real. We keep it unreal. Yeah, right, motherfucker, that's what's unreal. up. Unreal. That's, that's that's what I Don't always do. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Chico. Have a good night. I'll talk to all you. All right, soon. man. See you guys right. later. Well, it just brings us to you guys now, doesn't it? Uh, uh, my, my, Mikey, uh, Mikey team says hi from the Czech Republic. Hope to have you. He hope to have you here, guys. The new song is fire. Thank you. Good. And Darren says top top show. Can't wait to hear the new EP, guys. And thanks for letting me know. Abs absolutely. You know, here's a question, Stick, on the way out. Uh, does writing lyrics help? Uh, Stick, does writing lyrics help you mentally? Absolutely. Mm. That's how I get it out. You know, and the lyrics help other people, too. You know, I've been uh, throughout this, this whole journey, this musical journey. I've been hit up many a times about how song lyrics and just our music has helped people in their lives. And that's all I that's all I want. You know what I mean? I, I'm a real person. I'm, I'm not a rock star. You know, I'm just that 
you know, I'm at the show in uh, Pennsylvania a couple of weeks ago and people were like, oh, you were at the show? I'm like, yeah, I don't hide in the back room, hang out with the fans, talking to fans, talking about music, talking real life shit. You know, I never been a, a rock star or that guy. You know what I mean? I'm just a regular person. Just has a lot of shit to say. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it definitely helps, you know, and I mean everything I write, you know, it's from the heart. It's real. You know, I, I, I can't write any other way. I mean, I've done rap stuff, but, you know, rap is fabricated. But when it comes to this fury shit, it's real, it's real, real uh, emotion, uh, things that I've been through and things that I see and things that bother me. And I, I just I just know how to how to put it into words and, and, and spew it on the masses, you know, <laughs> it's uh, Jay, Jay. You want to thank anybody? Shout out anybody? Uh, just a quick, I guess. Also, like what Chico said, you know, uh, thanks to Stick for keeping Fury of Five going. Um, however, he did it, you know, I think helped to bridge the gap, you know, to allow us this opportunity to come back out in front of people. Um, he, you know, he he's the man, you know, he, he drives us um, and, and helps to push us. I also want to shout out all the people that have supported us even way back when, when it was difficult. Um, and, you know, there were definitely some challenges for a band like us to, to, to get out there. There were people we had, you know, in a lot of the East coast markets that, you know, made a way for us to, to come out and play and, and get on shows. And these guys are still out there doing it today. Um, and it's great to, you know, that I've had the chance to bump into a lot of these guys on the road and uh, also shout out to, Everybody that we met on the West Coast, as we mentioned earlier before, you know, it was a, a great opportunity to be out there and, uh, you know, to see, see what's happening and, and, and meet new people. So uh, thanks to you, Drew. Always nice to see you. You look great. Thank you look you. exactly the same. Whatever you're eating or doing over there, uh, keep it up. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, uh, I, I, I will. And, and I do it because I love it. And it, 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 it makes it all worthwhile when old friends like you guys get back together and, and, you know, go out and do great things. It, 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 it uh, reignites, you know, my, my, my spirit. Uh, Stick, you want to thank anybody? Shout anybody out? Listen, I, I, I'm just very thankful for everybody that supports what we do throughout the years. You know, uh, it's been a very, uh, you know, challenging band for us you know like you know like i said we've been canceled since 90 1994 you know because of the realism that comes with this band you know either you respect it or you don't and we don't fuck with the ones that don't respect it so i shout out to all the real ones who fuck with us you know what i mean and love us for what we do i could give a shit about anybody else you know what i mean like I know who the fake dudes are. That's so why I don't fuck with them. You know what I mean? I can see them in a the room. won't say nothing to them. So I think everybody that loves Fury of Five from the bottom of my heart means a lot to me, man. Shout out to my wife. She's uh, the rock in my life that uh, pushes me, man. I am so negative. And she is so positive. It's crazy. Makes me want to cry because I'm that crazy, man. You know? And she keeps me focused and pushes me. So just thank you, everybody, man. It means a lot. Right on, brother. Good. I love you guys. Uh, I, can, I can't thank you enough. And I can't wait to see you in person soon. So thanks again for coming on the show. And uh, have a good night, you guys. Thanks, thanks Drew. Happy, Happy New Year. Year. Take care. Well, there you have it. Great show with our old friends, Fury of Five. That was awesome. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it at least half as much as I did. Um, shows like this mean a lot. Um, they're just great, you know, just really, really great. Um, we'll see you on Wednesday. We got Rob Moss on the show from Artificial Peace and Government Issue. Um, I did mention, and I want to mention it again uh, before I go. Uh, where is it? Here we go. Um, just real quick, this is a big one. Uh, I'm going to announce it on social media, but uh, Richie Stotts from the Plasmatics is coming on the show Sunday, January 29th. 
It's going to be very cool. Because I'm co-hosting a show with, with Joel Ghostin. Uh, this is going to be great. Uh, we're going to mix it up a little bit. And here you go. Rob Moss is coming up this Wednesday. So that said, uh, Drew is the Dalai Lama of hardcore. Great show Thursday. Well, thank you. That was a great show Thursday. We fucking crushed it. It, it, it was great. Gajewski, thanks, man. Good to see you out there. Uh, thank you, John, in London, man. Thank you, buddy. Um, it was it was a good one. Heggs, love you, bro. Hope you're well. Uh, Joe Frank, you know, one for the books, man. I was That was a good I knew it was going to be good, you know. I knew it was going to be a good one. So that said, uh, have a good night, everybody. See you on Wednesday. Until then, do good things, and good things will come to you. <laughs>